Smith in. See you on the lift. Back attack, dude. <laughs> Fun for you! Hey, yo, homies. <laughs> Slide down the big hills. You know what I mean? On the big night, nice burgundy snowboard. Another beautiful day here at the Bomb Hole, which is presented by Pub Beer. Today, we have Mikey LeBlanc in the booth. How are you feeling today, Michael? I'm, I am loving it. Beautiful spring day. How are you, though, more importantly? I'm happy to be here. I love chatting with these guests mm-hmm. that we got. Uh, we got Ilva in the booth today. Ilva, how are you doing? I'm doing so good. Thank mm. you. Thanks for having me. We're happy that you're here. And for our listeners that are unfamiliar with who you are, uh, Ilva is a professional snowboarder from Iceland. She is Slush Mag's 2021 Rookie of the Year. Recently, she has landed herself two magazine covers in the past year. Uh, She's filmed some incredible video parts, including back-to-back Enders in the Uninvited films, as well as some series Heat in the latest project, Hot Cocoa. If you haven't seen that, you guys got to check it out. Uh, Her excitement for snowboarding is infectious. Her board control is off the chart. And she's a true gem to the snowboard community, Ilva. So uh, I'm going to take a stab at maybe saying your last name, because I look at it, there's a lot of there's a lot of hyphens and kind of letters, but it's Ilva Runa's daughter. Yeah. Was I close? Um, pretty close. Runa's yeah. Daughter. Runa's daughter. Runa's daughter. Yeah. Runa's daughter. Yeah. So you're from Iceland. I'm from Iceland. You guys yeah. speak Icelandic. Icelandic, correct. How, how was it growing up over there? Uh, really, really good. I love Iceland, and I think if I didn't snowboard, I would live in Iceland for sure. Uh, it's a great country. Everyone should go visit. That says. I wanted to go visit Iceland. Like, I've been wanting it forever. But yeah, S- you sell go. us, sell us on Iceland. Sell us. Yeah. So I think first and foremost, it's like great people. People are like used to having crazy weather, having to adjust. Just like all in all, very present. I think because you cannot just live after a schedule. Like everyone's gonna be late or way ahead of time because they're just <laughs> running it how it goes, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. And um, yeah, and I think. Just like the nature just complements that. Like it's wild and crazy and still beautiful because it has so much character. It's a bit different um, than many other like islands because it's, it's a really big island but very little population. So, yeah. so the, since it's so coastal, you guys get wild weather because there's so yeah. much. It just fluctuates mm-hmm. rapidly. A lot of wind and storms and yeah. You guys could have a motto. It could be like Iceland, never on schedule, always on time. Something like that. That would be great, yeah. yeah. I like that. Yeah. So um, let's talk about um, let's talk about candy. Candy? I heard you're a candy fanatic. I am a candy fanatic. I do have a surprise for you, too. Oh, you got a surprise for me? I got <laughs> yeah. a surprise for you. <laughs> okay, okay. But yeah, what do we got? Let's, let's, let's swap. Let's okay. swap. Let's hit it. Oh, wow. Okay. Uh, right I'm not it. sure. Do you guys drink alcohol? I don't. Okay. I do don't. you? I don't either. No. Okay, it's then you'll it. have to give it to some friends. This is like a, a licorice shot. Ooh, that's wow. uh, that's culture. Maybe right I'll start there. drinking again. Delicious. It's been six years, <laughs> but it could be worth it. But these you can try. This is something you're gonna love. Okay. Wow. Are these from Iceland or where are these? From? No. So I haven't been in Iceland for a little bit, but I came from Sweden. So okay. these are all from Sweden. Um, but yeah, this one is gonna be a, a pleasant surprise mm. for you, Chris. Let's hit it. Oh yeah. It's called yate. <laughs> yeah. Yet the salta. Yet the salta. Very salty, it means. Wow. Really? Yeah. This looks like and a that's salt candy. Uh, pill, basically, is what this is. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Mike, would you like to try that? I would love to try that. All right. You're going to regret that. Yet the salta. I like, pick- <laughs> I like salted herring. I like weird stuff. Hell yeah. So. <laughs> How are you feeling about so this, So this is Chris? technically candy? <laughs> this is candy. This yeah, is that's like. That's disgusting. <laughs> It's fucking disgusting. Do you, you eat that like and enjoy it? Yeah. I gotta wash it. Yeah, out of my I'll mouth. smash a bag of that in like no time. Ah, <laughs> like something I love if you were sick shit. or something. <laughs> this is the I I like it. It's good. Oh yeah. God. Yeah, I'm feeling this. Keep the rest or have of, it as a surprise. It's like for a friends. salted toffee kind of. Uh. Yeah, and this this has the flavor of what you just ate, but it's alcohol. And wow. every like teenager in Iceland, when they start <laughs> drinking, they go crazy. Of not exactly this one, but the Icelandic so version like of this one. So that's like a drink, because that's almost like. Yeah, it's like twenty one percent, so it's like a shot, but it tastes only like black licorice candy. Mm. Yeah. Well, first of all, <laughs> uh, black licorice is 
fucking disgusting. <laughs> and I believe that anybody that likes it should uh, be put in a mental hospital. So that's my take. Oh, wow. So we have some real uh, American candy. I actually don't know if it's American or not, but it's American to me. Haribo gummy bears. Uh, I think that's Danish. No? <laughs> <laughs> Isn't Could it? Be. Yeah, I'm sure you've had those. I'm down. I love them. We also have, I got. I did get some black licorice. Uh, nice. Do you ever eat these? Have you tried these? So these I don't ones, think the black licorice here is the same because yeah. it's kind of sweet. It's not so salty. No, this is this is still, <laughs> it's not sweet. Oh, okay. It's like we'll eat, try. It's we'll like try eating some. a piece of chalk. I'm going to get in there with you just because okay. it's. Good. I'm going back in on the Yachty Saltis. Oh, he likes them. Mm. We're good. Yeah. Yeah, so what a what a party we're having, I guys! Think you're gonna eat that and actually enjoy it. So we have licorice beans as well. Yeah, we'll take them. Just the smell. Just this the one smell you're gonna alone. like. This is just candy. Uh, like this is like uh, it's like Jägermeister. This mm. is like take like a this dry like Jägermeister. Throw me one of those black mm-hmm. licorice. I got you. One more. Oh. These yate saltes are good. Dude, mm-hmm. I'm sorry. That is fucking. Disgusting. Yeah, this is not like Scandinavian level. This is sweet. I like salty (coughs) when it's salty licorice, but it's good. It's I like all the candies. So you know, thank you so much, Chris. If I had the option of like eating black licorice or getting like waterboarded, (laughs) I think I'd go waterboard. Mm -hmm. Really anti. They should make it illegal. I think they should make it illegal in this country. (laughs) Uh, All right. So, but you're you guys are down. So you're you're pro black licorice is what you're telling me. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think most candies are either just salty black licorice or combined salty black licorice with chocolate. Mm. That's Iceland. What, what about f- what about Swedish fish? <laughs> <laughs> Swedish fish is so funny because I don't think that's Swedish at all. Like I've never seen it in Sweden, but it's probably good. I don't know if I've ever even tried it. It's really good, <laughs> Mike. I mean, I'll eat he's it. more into this. Yeah. Old people, it's like uh, old people candy that's just gr- it's just gross and dry. <laughs> and what's your favorite brand of black licorice? Wow, I don't know. There are so many, so many. Not one you crave. Mm-mm. Okay. All right. So you grew up in mm. uh, Iceland. How did you find mm-hmm. snowboarding? Mm. I started skateboarding um, with my brother. We got a skateboard together for. So we have this um, in Iceland. There's they called first day of summer and then usually parents give their kids like uh, kind of a toy to play with in summer and we got a skateboard together it was mm. a crazy creek skateboard which is like an intersport brand kind of like um no brand in skateboarding really but but we skated it so much we broke the tail and the nose before we got like a deck each so who's, that was pretty we? sick me and my brother okay, we got, got it, it yeah yep. yeah and um yeah so I just loved it. I thought it was really, really fun from the start. And then I wanted to snowboard because of that. Mm. And, um, yeah, my family never skied and never went to any ski resorts or anything. So it was kind of a little bit out of the blue. I mean, not fully because of skateboarding, but, yeah, I wanted a snowboard. And I asked for a snowboard for a while, and then I got a snowboard for Christmas when I was 14. Mm. And, um, yeah, my mom bought it off. Blunt Pundres, which is similar to Craigslist, I guess. Uh, found like a like a complete package with bindings, boots, and a board. And the boots were like three sizes too big. And she was like, she's going to grow in them. And, <laughs> and I still wear the same size shoe than when she bought them. So I've never fitted my first snowboard boots, which is pretty funny. And yeah, that's how it started. And um, like a year later, I went up ending to go to like my first ski resort and mm-hmm. yeah i just started like behind my house kind of thing mm-hmm. yeah for, forgive my mm-hmm. ig- ignorance for not knowing or studying but does does iceland have like ski resorts and stuff um yeah there is a couple but um not that reliable i'd say so like i'm from reykjavik which is the which is the city and it's in south and um, mm-hmm. i think that first winter i like started snowboarding my resort was open like three days throughout the season, just like one day open here and one day open there. So there's like, like not a not a season that you can count on, but there's like going to be a week where the resort is open. Mm-hmm. But when you go up further north or like west or different sides of the country, you have ski resorts that are more reliable because they, I guess they get more snow and, and they can, some places they can make snow, which they couldn't in like, 
my home resort because it was like a water protected area. So it was too expensive to make snow. Um, but yeah, it was like 40 minutes from my house. It was the closest ski resort to me. And then eventually you went over to Sweden to mm -hmm. snowboard? Yeah. Yeah, so I think like the first year I started, or second year, I think I was 15 when um, when I got, it's really crazy, I got sponsored because of skateboarding. Uh, mm. Because I was, uh, I was skateboarding in the Nikita backyard. Mm. And I don't know if everyone out there is familiar with the fact that Nikita is an Icelandic company mm -hmm. from the start. Like there's amazing Icelandic woman, Heida, yeah. started the company. And um, and yeah, they had a they had a store downtown Reykjavik and and they ha they would have an event called uh, Nikita Jib and Skate. So there's a mini in the backyard and then they would get like corrugated pipes and like a box or something in the backyard. and. And the first year I went there, I was only skateboarding, and I was looking at the snowboarders, and I was like, oh, my God, I want to do this. <laughs> that looks so cool. And, um, yeah, I ended up doing that the year after. Like, I, I went and skate and snowboarded both. And, yeah, I, I was just always hanging out there. So I got, like, a pair of uh, Nikita snow pants. So I got kind of, like, sponsored through Nikita at that time, like, with gear. And, um, and then through that... Uh, Haller and Aiki heard about me because they were hosting their first ever lobster snow camp. So they, the year they started Lobster Snowboards, they like made a made a camp up in where they're from, north of Iceland, for kids. And um, I was 15, and <laughs> I was asked to come coach. I didn't really know how to all <laughs> or almost anything, but um, they wanted a girl coach as well. And there wasn't really anyone that was fully into it at that time, I guess. Um, and yeah, through Nikita, they ended up like asking if I could come and coach at that camp. And, and the kids were 14 and I was 15. So <laughs> I was like, oh my God. And there was two girls that showed up to the camp and I think I like could show them around a bit. So it was a success. But most of the guys at the camp were just my friends who I like would skateboard with. So that was really fun. Like I was the, I guess, participant and a coach at the same time. It was really cool. And, um, yeah, they just kind of, like, they both and more Icelandic guys at that time had went to school in Sweden, like a snowboarding school kind of thing. And they were like, if you want to keep snowboarding, you should go to Sweden. It's, like, really sick. They have snow parks. And, like, we didn't have a snow park or anything. Like, it was just, like, shaping a side hit at your hill. And um, they were, like, kind of hyping that up. Like, you should go. It's really sick. And, and I was like, wow, that's so cool. So that's when I went to Sweden, and um, I did apply for the school that they went to, but I, I didn't get into that. So, yeah, so I went to school in Sweden, also, like, somewhat of a snowboarding school, but not the school that they had went to. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I noticed when mm -hmm. I watch you snowboard, I feel like you have really sound fundamentals, the way you, like, pop and board control and air awareness. Do you attribute that? to like snowboarding a lot at a younger age at the schools or how did you how did you get that board control you feel like well thank you um I don't know I I guess I like I've always been very like a feeling person like I like to f feel feel it in a way I don't know how to put it but um I wouldn't be too crazy about like learning all the tricks I just wanted to feel good and like do the things that felt good and I think from that board control comes when you when you're actually trying to feel where is my back foot now where is my front foot what am i doing with my weight and then later on i mean with injuries and stuff you have to adjust that and you have to change your favorite tricks maybe and stuff like that and and then if you don't have those fundamentals it's going to be a bit harder i think yeah so i think that um yeah just from wanting to I guess I'm a nerd somehow, somewhat, you know, just wanting to know where my weight is and wanting to know how it works and how can I make it work better in a way. Yeah. 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 I think, I don't know, but also just probably snowboarding a lot. And skateboarding yeah. too, I think probably skating at it a lot. Yeah. 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 I guess so. Are you, so I was scrolling through your gram. Mm. Are you, your regular foot snowboarding yeah. and your goofy skateboarder? Yeah, I that's, am. That's interesting. Was that, I was... Did your first snowboard come with a uh, regular foot stance on it, or what happened there? 
I did my first season goofy because okay. I thought I was going to be goofy yeah. as well because, or just like when I was trying to snowboard, I was like, obviously I'm going to try to skateboard, but, but I found out really soon that I was like better at riding switch mm. and then that's probably <laughs> your right way, you know, like, yeah. um, so I think, I think I've like, I think I know why I do it. I know a lot of people do it, and I know a lot of people are like, I don't know why I do it, but I think I'm just, like, way stronger in my front leg. Mm -hmm. And on a snowboard, I I think all the, like, I guess, movement of, like, turning and, like, mm -hmm. I want to keep it in my, in my like, back leg on a snowboard, but in on skateboarding, I want to turn with my front leg. And, and I don't know if that makes any sense, but that's why I do it. Mm -hmm. Like, I like to turn with with my right foot mm -hmm. so yeah i think that's where that comes from wow that's yeah. cool. you know what is I, i'm the same as her regular yeah. skate goofy snowboard regular oh, sorry. and i think that actually makes the most sense i've heard i think if yeah. you're, you know what's crazy though i think if you're doing it right you want to steer with your you don't necessarily just want to steer with your back yeah on a snowboard but when you learn yeah. that's how you do it yeah i guess i don't know i just like to have the the maximal weight on the back leg because mm. You're maybe I'm stronger there, or maybe it's just because I've always done that. I don't mm -hmm. know. And skating, yeah. pushing with your front foot, and steering with your over the front trucks, it makes a lot more. That makes a lot. Yeah, because when you're pushing, you still have to be able to steer, and then that is the strong foot that's still on your board. Mm -hmm. So I think that's why. Yeah, yeah I don't that know. Makes sense. Yeah. Um, we got a buzzer beater question from uh, Jess Kamura. I didn't get to put oh, it wow. in the podcast machine here, so I'm just gonna play it uh, <laughs> in the speaker. Here we go. Oh yeah. Hey boys, hey Alpha, it's Jess Kamira here with a guest question that I hope will make it in in time. Um, Ilfa, I was just wondering where your air awareness comes from and if you've always just felt like you can cork your stuff naturally. I just feel like when you jump and when you're doing tricks in the air, it just looks so sick like you're so comfortable spinning off axis and I just wanted to know, were you in gymnastics or did that come naturally? Where did that come from? Wow. Thank you, Jess. That was that was really, really cool to hear. Big idol. Uh, thank you. Um, yeah, no, I've never done any gymnastics or anything like that. I think my air awareness has come like within time. I don't think I don't think I'm very talented. I think I worked for it like very hard. But um I think that um I think it's like being relaxed, enjoying it in a way, because I'm not very often trying to hug something. I'm like trying to do something that feels good, and I and I do like you know, and it might look rowdy or crazy or whatever, but but in my head, I I I want to know what I'm gonna do. I I I think that's where air awareness comes from when you like know where you are and you you feel good. Like if you're nervous, I don't think you can. Like hold it together as well. I don't know where I'm going with this, but your own um, target. Um, yeah, I guess. Yeah, it doesn't come from. I mean, I did soccer when I was a kid. I don't know. Does that help with? I guess it yeah. helps with some kind of like, <laughs> motoris or something. Yeah, body know. mechanics. Yeah, 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 maybe. But um, yeah, no, I'm not sure. Like, um, I just think that when you're calm, it it'll show. And like when you feel good in the air and. You feel good, like she's talking about corking things, and I really like being upside down because I just think it feels good and it feels fun. It's like, <laughs> it's like, um, I guess some of those tricks are not that like technically hard, but they feel very good, and and that's why it's so nice to be upside down. But yeah, I don't think, I don't know, I don't see myself as very controlled and collected, like she's saying. So I think that's why, yeah. I don't know the answer to that. You yeah. you highlighted uh, you kind of breezed mm. over something while you're getting to the air awareness part, but you just mm -hmm. said uh, mentioned how you don't feel like you're talented. Something along the lines of oh. work ethic oriented. Yeah. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, sure. I think um, yeah, I think just like some some people are just very naturally talented at like most things. Usually, it's not just snowboarding. Whoever. I don't know, whoever I know that's like very, very talented from scratch at snowboarding is usually very talented at anything. I think it has to do with like how you shift your focus and like how you can just like, um, some of it is probably just how your body's built, but a lot of it might be um, 
just like some people are so good at shifting focus to one thing and I don't think that I necessarily have that but I have just fallen in love with snowboarding so I've like worked hard at like you know testing myself like just like oh this trick looks really scary I'm gonna be able to do that like I'm I'm gonna do it you know and mm -hmm. I and I think I'm more of like um have to try it and visualize it and like work on it before I try it rather than naturally talented in that way of like just boom and then it's there kind of thing I don't know yeah, yeah. That, that makes sense I know plenty yeah. of people that had all the natural talent I would mm -hmm. be more of the working type probably Chris too yeah but putting in the time and, and like, like I like what you said about visualizing before mm -hmm. you even try it like let's yeah. say you see a trick that you really want to do like that looks cool it looks scary yeah. What's the process? Is this, are we mm -hmm. talking like a year or a month or a week or that day? Like what's your I think process? it's like very, very different. Yeah. And I think that I'm, I'm quite spontaneous as a person overall. So I think I, I wouldn't say visualizing is my strong side because I don't like know necessarily that I want to do it in before. But then I'm there and maybe like I saw someone do that last week and I see a feature and I'm like, hey, I could try that there or something and if it happens naturally I'll try it but I'm not too good at planning mm. I guess so like maybe visualizing isn't my strong side even if I'm talking about that you know how sometimes we talk about things we wish we were and mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe not exactly how we are but but yeah I, I try to visualize for sure and especially with like street spots I think like mm -hmm. if you go to the spot the day before and you build it and you kind of like visualize because you don't want to like play around the the like possibilities of just like you know having way too little speed or you know like y you want to visualize like how is this going to work and mm -hmm. and that you might have to change all of that which sometimes makes it harder when you visualize something and it works like totally different that's mm -hmm. what i'm wondering are you somebody who shows up to the spot you're hitting a heavy claim you're about to you're like yeah i'm gonna back 270 this thing <laughs> and all of a sudden yeah. you like oh wow it, this thing's tall it's sketchy we don't have the speed mm. I'm gonna go fifty fifty. Like, what's your what's your vibe as far as uh, uh, claiming it when you get to the spot? Um, I am trying to become more of a claimer because I think it brings people <laughs> success. So you yeah. know, <laughs> <laughs> so I'm working on that. But I think I'm fairly like reasonable mm. um, to myself, and that might be me downplaying my own skill, or that might be something else. But like, um. Mostly what gets me excited about spots is like finding them mm -hmm. <laughs> rather than doing tricks on them. Um, so I think, yeah, it's a mix of both, I guess. Uh, probably, yeah, like someone that's been filming with me is probably sitting home laughing like because I claimed something sometime. But in my head, I don't do that a lot. <laughs> yeah. I don't know. But, but I'd like to claim more. Yeah. There's nothing better than when you're sitting <laughs> watching a video with somebody mm. and you're like, oh, we're going to this rail tomorrow. And somebody just does like the most outrageous couch claim when they're just yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> and you're just like, and then you get to the thing the next day and they're mm. just like all backpedaling. And I'm, I'm uh, guilty of that yeah. um, in many ways. Yeah. But uh, I got a guest question here from Maria Thompson that pertains to what you're talking about. Here okay. we go. Okay, sick. What's up, Bomho? Hi, Ilva. It's Maria. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to hear that you're in the booth. I know that you love to talk. And for a matter of fact, it's really hard to ever get you to be quiet. So I'm sure it's going to be a fun conversation to listen to. I'm a huge fan of your snowboarding. And I always really admire the spot selection you have in your parts. I know it's something you take a lot of pride in too. So I was wondering if you can let us in on what goes into this process a little bit. Um do you use Google Maps? Do you look for them? Uh, what do you like? Um, what are you looking for? Is this honestly really your mom that helps you find spots on Google Maps? Because I remember when we were in Iceland, she would send us some pretty heavy spots that she had found on Google Maps. Wow. Oh Anyways, I think it'd be really fun to hear uh, how this process or what this process looks like for you. My second question is, why do you always speak with food in your mouth? <laughs> I know your friends will know what I'm talking about. If I think about Ilva, I picture 
your little face just stuffed with food in your mouth with your cute little accent trying to like talk to me um and is this just a bad habit or is it actually a flex um can't wait to hear your answer love you so much bye guys oh that was sweet wow Maria is sick i love her Mm-hmm. She's incredible. Yeah. Um so the first question was about spots and uh we'll just start with my mom because it's hilarious. Uh so we're in Iceland last year. Really cool. Finally get to go to Iceland to film streets. Like I'm from there, but I've actually never like gotten weather to film something like real. And um when I'm there or I had the chance to go on a trip when it's good. Uh so we go to Iceland. And um, and we're filming streets, and my mom sends me like this. <laughs> she's she's really really amazing. Like she's trying to understand the whole snowboarding, and she's like she's getting there. She's like doing her nerding on social media, figuring out what the hell I'm doing in my life, and um, and she found this like insane, probably like three hundred stairs, like handrail <laughs> it's like a stairway to heaven type of thing like where there's a whole like hill and up the hill there's just like endless stairs and there's gap between every single rail as well it's literally like 100 meters long and she's just like what about this thing and i was just like laughing so hard because it was just so sweet and innocent and it was in her head it was like exactly what i'm doing <laughs> and i'm like oh my god wow she really believes in me <laughs> like this is crazy so i so i show this to like maria and nora and they're just like oh my god this is crazy but yeah yeah i think um let's give your mom an air horn for yeah. that. that's a respectable Mom's, move so cool. yeah. trying to send over some my mom never spots. sent me any spots yeah I mean, yeah no i say the same i gotta yeah. like check in with mom yeah yeah she she's really cool she's trying to understand all of this and she's really doing a good job i mean she understands like the way of how how like important this is and i think that's the like bottom line kind of absolutely that's what needs to be understood and sometimes we don't want other people to understand more than that we want to keep it like ridiculously exclusive snowboarding and like we don't want people to understand or whatever but um but yeah it's cool that she's trying and that she's doing it yeah but um as for the spot selection and like what i like to do i think i think i just love the whole process of like street snowboarding and and the sad part about street snowboarding is the lack of snowboarding. That's like the only True. thing that I that I like wish was involved in street snowboarding. <laughs> That's actual snowboarding. But I do love the just driving around for hours trying to find spots. Um, I love Google Maps um just finding areas. And I think mostly what I try to search for is colors and I like go off of colors and I try to like find something and if that's in the background or the spot itself or whatever like I I'm drawn to colors for sure and I and I try to like keep that in the back of my head and then whatever I hit can be a mix of everything you know like that could be like a part of you know the group that was there it can be like something way different or sometimes when those thoughts pop in like what do people want to see or whatever you know like there's all kinds of spots that I hit and they're not necessarily all beautiful. I'm not saying that, but that's like the the goal is to find the beautiful spots that look colorful and and uh, nice. And and sometimes I have tricks that I want to do for the winter, but mostly I just want to use whatever I find kind of and like work with the work with the environment of a new place. I'm not like I'm not too big on like um I guess um I'm not too big on on like doing too much research before I get there because I think it sometimes takes away from like being new in that area and wanting to actually like explore it and find find what is there like what is really here and it gives you a better insight of like culture and that specific place you're in like it it's very it's very charming and interesting to look for spots and you interact with a lot of like people and it's just a great it's a great um, and a ridiculous hobby, I guess. <laughs> <laughs> I think, yeah. yeah. But 
Yeah, was that the question? The last I one was something with uh, food and food oh. in the mouth. I think was the last one. Yeah, I think she's just shooting shooting shots towards me here, but <laughs> but yeah, I I uh, I definitely do that, and I talk a lot. I'm like now I'm like um, all all mic'd up and stuff, but off mic I probably talk even more. <laughs> and um, yeah, I talk with food in my mouth because what I'm trying to say is really important, even at that <laughs> moment when I when I'm when I'm eating. Mm. No, I'm just kidding, but. I don't know. No manners, I guess. You waste time when you're not talking. I mean, if you're, if right? you're eating and you need to say something. Yeah. All right. Time management. Time. Yeah, yeah. No, it's funny. Thank you, Maria. All right, we're going to take a quick break and talk to you guys about liquid death. We've been annihilating these cans on the show. Uh, they look like beers, but they're just water. But big news, they actually have teas now. Jules, did you hear that? What's your What's your favorite flavor? You know, I've tried all three of them, and I like them all a lot, but I think Rest in Peach is my favorite. It's just really refreshing, and it tastes pretty healthy. Mmm, healthy taste. Love that. I'm an armless Palmer guy myself. I like the RNEP. I like golfing. It's a great tea. So uh, definitely check out Liquid Death's new teas coming out right now. Uh, basically, they're available with free shipping on Amazon and retailers near you. As an added bonus, the Bombhole listeners get 20% off their first Liquid Death Apparel purchase available exclusively at liquiddeath.com slash bombhole. Exclusions may apply. That's liquiddeath.com slash bombhole and murder your thirst with these new teas. All right, we're going to get into a quick Patreon question. Um, Mike, do you know what Patreon is? I don't. What is it? I haven't heard of it. Let me tell you, Mike. It's uh, We got a group of supporters that uh, it's almost like I almost look at it as public radio. People that want to support the show, okay. uh, they're, they're able to donate. Okay. You can find a link on our website. So they just donate and that's it, or what? Well, let me tell you, they get to ask a question. Okay. Um, like here, we got some questions from CC Nelson, Brian Mills, mm-hmm. Johnny Mandio, uh, Nikki Lorenz. You know, these are just a few people that do, uh, donate and then they ask questions. They also know uh, we pre record the show several weeks in advance so they know who's on mm-hmm. real time. And you get a little package for signing up, you get some holiday cards. But mostly, it's great because it gets the. You get to support us doing what we do, and we're really appreciative of our Patreon members. So I just want to say thank you. And with that being said, I think we should get into well, that, I'm the question. Real quick, that sounds cool, but how do they sign up? Well, Mike, it's funny that you ask. Hmm. You know, head on over to bombhole.com okay. and find a link there. Okay, cool. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. So um, this one's from CC Nelson. Who were some of your early inspirations? Could be on or off the board. Okay, good question. Um yeah, I think, yeah, early inspirations. I I think the Nikita girls, for sure, like Gabby, Median, and then Anna Rumia were probably my two big favorites out of the Nikita riders. Um, and then Halder, obviously, like um, idol to everyone from Iceland, I think. Um, yeah, and... Actually, so many. I I think I watched the, that and those four movies a lot, and I really liked Stevie Bell because he had really positive, great energy. Mm-hmm. So he was a big favorite for sure. Um, yeah, I think I think so many people. But yeah, let's leave it at those four. What about Bjork? Yeah, Bjork's cool. Yeah, she she's an amazing person. Like really interesting. Um, she went to school with my mom. She's pretty cool. Um, and I think she was like a, like a child genius already at a, at a really young age. She, she had it all figured out. I think, mm-hmm. or like, enough mm-hmm. to be incredible. I'm I'm yeah. curious. You guys got like you mean Heldor, Ike, Bjork, yourself. It seems like a really small town. What's the population, Iceland? Do you have any idea? Uh, like three hundred fifty thousand. Damn. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That's, That's really the whole small. Country. Very yeah. creative. Holy shit. Yeah. Group of people mixed in yeah my experience with people from iceland the nikita people yeah and all the other people mentioned super creative yeah yeah just for mixed sure. up style is super yeah. cool mm-hmm. um, so societally is there a like a respect for the arts and creativity there yeah for sure i think i think it goes like way back and this is like my theory this mm-hmm. is not um anything that i know any facts about but i'm just like what I think is that, like, we come from this small island and the weather is rough and you have to get creative to, like, manage your time and do the things that you have to do. And then on the side, like, 
you have a lot of, let's say, downtime to do things that, like, that keep you sane, right? Uh, that's that's what I think it was like way back. So we made up all these stories. There's like so many stories about like elves and and like all like just cr- trolls and creatures and the ocean and whatnot. Like, and I think that was just to keep people sane because a lot of the time you just had to stay inside. I think. Mm-hmm. Uh, and there's where like a a lot of like the root of the creativity comes in, and it's always been accepted to like believe in fairy tales and live in a fairy tale kind of thing. Mm. And I think that's why a lot of people feel the freedom to just like you that's very accepted, I mm-hmm. think. Um and it and it comes down to like um or not comes down to, but I think a lot of people just thrive in that and then that generates more energy towards that. And then so it's just like next generation takes it the step further and and next generation and and so on so like there's a lot of creativity like all around everyone i think a lot of people have art in their family like Mm. pretty close by like one generation back or two or something Mm. someone was a poet and someone was uh playing music and yeah Mm. like all of that so i think i think it's just very accepted in the culture art is like an important thing to to a good life and um I'm not sure if that's the case everywhere, but I think that's definitely the case in Iceland. Mm-hmm. Like, you you know that's a root of happiness somehow. And it's, yeah, I think so. Wow. Yeah. Love that. So we did we answer both of CeCe's questions? Uh, oh, was oh, there we, If not, I would like to ask more about art. Yeah, let's go. Let's stay in on that. We have another question, but I want to I want to stay on this too because I'm interested yeah. by this yeah. topic. Yeah, the art topic. I mean, you you breezed over the elf thing, so I also yeah I heard a stat and had to check mine, but 44 percent of Icelandic people believe in elves. What's your take on that? Um, my take is, I think that. I believe that there's more than us, right? And if we want to call that elves or energies or gods or whatever we want to call that, it's definitely out there. Mm-hmm. And I think if we, or from, that's that's my point of view. Like, it's definitely out there. And I think that, like, if you, if it's something that makes you feel good or, like, makes you feel a certain type of way, it's real to you. Yeah. So, like, what, in, like, no matter what that means to anyone else, if it's real to you, it is real. Mm. So I think believing in stuff is, it can be very good and it can be very bad, you know, like, mm. and I think for, yeah, for people to believe that there is other like energies mm. or elves or yeah. stuff Whatever, out there yeah. just gives you like, um, like a, like a self check, mm-hmm. you know, like we're not, just us here we need to like respect that there's other things and like um you know when those weird things happen and you're like oh that was fate then if you want to believe that then that was fate Mm -hmm. and same way that placebo is that how you say it placebo 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 works on on people like uh, let's say i always eat candy for breakfast because it's good (laughs) for me i do think that in some ways, it is good for sure, me yeah. because I believe it, yep. and that just that's, it's just the power of the mind of like what makes you you and what like and it's it's real to you then it is real mm-hmm. that that's how I see it. So elves or whatever you want to call it, I think I call it energies. Mm-hmm. Yeah, cool. Yeah, and and I think they're definitely real. Yeah, I just assumed that it was like sort of yeah. A- could have been an interpretation on the web. It's something I've heard. I have yeah. some friends from Iceland that, they, you know, when I heard that and then meet them, the energy they have, like a playful vibe. Yeah. Super cool haircuts, gear, everything is like. Yeah. I could see that there's something affecting my friends from Iceland in a positive way <laughs> where they're really playful and cool mm-hmm. and artistic. and. That's cool. Yeah. 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 And that's cool to hear. I yeah. think that, um, I think it's a very, like, fun topic yeah. to to stay on because it's just like it's just an ad- adventure and we don't know that much about it um so i think that even if i say energies and talk about it like this in the broad like yeah. broader picture i think a lot of people do believe in like 
elves mm-hmm. and that they steal stuff from your house or you know like yeah. and and more so like back in the days for sure so they're kind of tricksters elves are tricksters uh yeah it, it depends how you treat them yeah. so like if you treat them well they will treat you well <laughs> but if you're a piece of shit then they'll steal your <laughs> silver or something yeah. yeah yeah so kind of like that that's I, cool i gotta commend you I, yeah you just did such a beautiful job articulating the energies and and uh could be like almost it's like a it's like hard to put into words how you just and you just did such a great job thank you um explaining that i was captivated so <laughs> and i also almost want to rewind a little bit <clears throat> too talking about yeah. like you know even even broader like you know what i hear when you talk about iceland it's like kind of like uh it almost seems like anything is possible like a chase your dreams uh foster your creativity um kind of an open open-minded kind of uh mentality and then I think about all over the states and, you know, us geographically in North America, you know, there's there's definitely like certain areas geographically that are like, well, you can't be an artist. You got to be real here. You got to you mm-hmm. got to do you got to pay your bills. You got to do something that's safe. You got to do, yeah. you know, and be like it's like there's like kind of um, uh, optimistic and there's like cynical um, yeah. and a lot of places are kind of cynical, which I think is is man you know because people are scared you got to pay your bills totally natural everybody's mm-hmm. circumstances are different but it sounds like just a society that that is not as fear-based in in some ways i don't know if i'm on target with that yeah, yeah. but i i do think this is also my experience so True. like this is where i'm coming from and got i it. and i bet that there's thousands of places in the world that have and people that have the same experience from their homes that sure. i do from mm-hmm. mine because i guess i felt free uh being me in my home and not everyone has that and probably definitely not everyone in iceland has that either so i think Mm. it's like this fairy tale world version is like all coming from my head as well so Mm. i guess we should not maybe like uh, generalize because Mm -hmm. i'm sure that there is all of everything so we have we have like i don't know just so many so many like thoughts in our heads about like how things are and and we're sometimes like way off but Mm -hmm. in our heads like i was talking about the house it's so real so Mm -hmm. like in my head it's so real that that's iceland but to someone else they might have a Mm -hmm. totally different experience from growing up there or something yeah Mm -hmm. well well, i heard uh you travel everywhere with a notebook and i'm curious as to what do you what's going on in that notebook wow um yeah i think just I think when I like express myself with art, um, I tend to like just draw and and write and do whatever I feel like, and that's not necessarily pretty. That's not necessarily ugly either. It can be like beautiful. It can be awful. It can be anything. Just like whatever I feel like. I like to put it on paper and I don't do this always, but when, when I get the time and when I feel like I have to, those like kind of creative outlets of just like getting a thought out of your head onto paper feels really good. And, um, and I might never look at it again. Usually that's, that's the case of my notebook. Mm -hmm. I will put maybe even 10 hours into it. Like drawing to me and painting is the same as snowboarding. I can get into this like, insane like a bubble of just nothing else exists i don't get hungry i don't need to go to bathroom i don't need to do there there's like nothing else there's just drawing and whatever i'm drawing or writing and um and i think when it's on the paper it's already out so i don't need to look at it again you know yeah. so like it, it's kind of just like um i don't think the book itself is is uh, the treasure the treasure is like whatever you're doing to like stay, stay sane, stay focused, stay on doing things that make you feel good. I, love I think, that. yeah. I think you know, Chris and I talk sometimes yeah. how people will when you don't express something, it gets stored in your body. Mm-hmm. But you're, it almost sounds like you're like just taking whatever you're feeling and putting it, yeah, into mm-hmm. another place, and you can kind of let it go. Yeah, I think, or I, I, I'd like to think so. Mm. I try. I mean, this is one method, but yeah, yeah. yeah. Love that. Yeah. So I also heard you, you, I heard about the notebook, but also you usually travel on trips with art supplies too. Yeah, some pens, some, maybe face paint. I love face paint. It's just fun and it like 
makes people smile. Glitter, a little bit of glitter at the party. Put it on someone's face. Mm -hmm. Like, Changes it just, like, I don't know. It just gives them an, an like, uh, expression of, like, being, like, whatever they want to be or mm. doing whatever they want to do. And then, and it, that might be forced from my part sometimes, so they might not want to do that, but they'll get glitter anyway. But yeah, uh, I just think it like creates a pretty nice, I don't know, like it, it makes people loosen up. And like sometimes I feel like in snowboarding, especially like we nerd so hard and we care so much about snowboarding that sometimes we forget to like just do fun things and not think about what is, you know, the next trick or what's cool or, mm -hmm. you know, whatever. Like, I just love when we can relax and be just, like, people together because that's why we're all in this together kind of thing. Mm -hmm. I don't know. Wow. Yeah. You know what I was kind of correlating as you're talking about all the art supplies and the face paint and... I'm like, this sounds like when I'm hanging out with my brother and my sister's kids. <laughs> <laughs> this is yeah. the shit we do. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I have like, um, I have a great friend of mine that, that once said, um, he, I've been studying a lot of like yoga theory at, at, uh, with, with that person. And they, and they told me that like, it's not being childish, it's being childlike. So mm -hmm. just keep that kind of like mentality mm -hmm. of, um, I don't know, you know, it is, it is just like in the bottom line, like of whatever we do in life, we're all trying to like maintain some sort of like being happy and having a purpose. I think that's what everyone's trying to do, whether that's with career path or art, uh, which also sometimes turns into a career path, but, but like, or sports or just like anything in life. I think that's like the main two things that people are trying to get at like having purpose and being happy mm. i think and and everyone accesses those in different ways and that's amazing but i think that's like it's not an end goal it's definitely just like a work in progress and mm. like a journey but it is it's definitely like a i think it's a thing yeah i, I have a hard hitting question for you yeah do you feel like being happy is a choice uh many times yes and and um I probably, like, I think that it's circumstantial for everyone, of course. But there are certain things that you can, like, always do to, like, to, like, choose in every moment. Um, so, so like, the way that I hate, like, horror movies. I will mm -hmm. not watch that shit because, like, I can choose. Do I want to feel good or do I want to feel bad? Same with music. Like, very dark, emotional, maybe, like, suicidal music. Mm -hmm like some of the newer like very very hard trap is like the lyrics are like awful and that just like hits me right away and I feel very bad then I choose not to listen to that or like um you know like emo rock I choose not to listen to that because it makes me feel bad and I can feel it like right away so when I can just choose happiness I choose songs that make me want to move I I want to like feel good and then mm. like those things help like what what we put into all our senses, like our eyes, our ears, our touch, our smell, like everything that we choose is like is like a, a source or everything that we we use our senses to touch or or smell or anything, it all contributes to how we feel. So there is a lot of ways to choose your environment. Choose the people you hang out with. Choose your circumstances. And I'm not saying that everyone all the time has the ability to do that. And I know that's like, um, maybe it sounds very unfair to someone that I sit here saying that. Because I'm, yeah, I'm, I think I'm very fortunate. But I also think that in any circumstance, even in those circumstances where you feel like you're put in, and you have no choice, you still kind of have a choice on how you view it, at least. Mm -hmm. And like, what is my, wh what do I want to get to now? Do I want to like stay in this feeling of, I have no speed, uh, I this sucks, it's windy as fuck, or then I keep repeating that and thinking that, or do I think, well, um, I could go and grab a coffee and have a good time at the 
<laughs> you know. Yeah. So yeah. like you can kind of choose in those circumstances. Like you don't have to usually. I mean, different with maybe whoever is on doing contests and stuff. But you don't always have to be doing what you think you have to be doing. It might be like holding you back instead of like building you up. So I think definitely to some extent, yeah. I think you can choose to be happy. Mm. Yeah. She's wise, Mike. I'm like backing that a hundred percent. Yeah. Love it. I think life is about choice. It's straight up one choice after the next and you were just yeah. nailing that in such a profound way. Thank you. Yeah. I also was hearing too, you know, just because this is fascinating and I think you'll have more to add to it. So I kind of want to maybe tee it up and see if you go anywhere with it. Mm -hmm. But thinking about all these things, you seem like you have a, uh, you're a deep thinker is what I'm gathering. And it's really (laughs) fun to listen to you talk about this stuff. (laughs) And I always think about, you know, going back to when you're talking about losing yourself doing art and losing yourself (laughs) doing snowboarding. And it's interesting because a lot of my personal, like, quote unquote problems that aren't real problems. They're kind of my own that I make up to be problems, but they're that's just me focusing on some a fear that's coming in the future, like something in the future or dwelling mm. on something in the past. Whereas, you know, those things where you lose yourself, you're as corny as it sounds and everybody talks about, but you're you're actually just living in that moment. And it's like children, like you mentioned earlier. Yeah. They're just in the moment. That's what mm-hmm. makes it so so beautiful. It's like as we get older, yeah. we go, we just pull ourselves out of the moment and mm-hmm. we go, Oh, well, fuck, what am I what's my schedule say tomorrow? And I gotta look at my phone, I gotta check my email, what I'm gonna plan, and oh my Instagram, oh, this person's mm. doing better than I am. Oh, and, and like and you're just not all yeah. these things compounding, they're just pulling you out of the present moment yeah. where it seems like you've you've done a great job to foster just being living it. Um I- I mean, I'm working on it, obviously. But I think that, yeah, I think it's hard to, like, sit in because I, I don't like to like it to come off that I know what I'm talking about because I don't think any of us do. You know, like, it's just, like, um, observations of, like, everything, and I haven't mastered any of it, but I'm just, like, I'm, like you say, I'm a thinker and I observe and I I like to see solutions instead of problems. And maybe I talk like I've already used all those solutions, but I'm not there, you know? So I think, um, yeah, that's a, like, I'm not putting myself on any kind of pedestal saying that I don't do that because I think we all do. Like all of those things get distracted and like what we should be doing or whatever. But um, yeah, I, I think that just like, snowboarding in general is an action sport and I think all action sports have that thing to them where you need to be present like and that's why we some people are just drawn to that emotion of like being present so they in in like all reality they might not even care that much about snowboarding per se they could choose any action sport because it's like a way of meditating, just being present with this one thing. And there, when you are like going fast as fuck and you have to stay on point or do that thing, otherwise you're going to get hurt, There, the other thoughts do not exist. And I think that's why a lot of people get so addicted to snowboarding and like to action sports in general because you need to be so present. So I think just like from that, we all have a certain kind of calmness to us. I think every snowboarder that I ever met can to some extent come to like a meditative mindset, which is really, really, I'm not going to say it's rare, but it's quite rare in like the general world because a lot of people might not discover that until like very late on in life or maybe never, you know. So I think in snowboarding, a lot of people at a fairly young age and in all those like, action sports type things you like you're not forced to learn that but you learn that as you go you learn to shift your focus into one thing and that is meditation so it's just the form of it I think being so present in snowboarding and that's why I think we all kind of like like each other without even knowing each other for the most part because we like we have this thing that we can like really connect on so I think that's pretty cool. Mm-hmm. Now, uh, Ilva, I don't know if you know this, but Mikey is, uh, 
He's like a Zen master of some sort. Not at all. Zen, he's a Zen person. <laughs> yeah, I'm gonna go. He goes and sits in a concrete room and just fucking <laughs> stares at the wall for six no, hours. No, I'm gonna I'm gonna take your exact stance because I I say the same thing. I don't know yeah. shit. Yeah. And that's to me the best. Not knowing yeah. is the best thing you can do because when you know, you put yourself in a box and everybody else in a box. Yeah. But I love you what you're separate, saying. Separates. Yeah. Yeah, but I'd also mm. I mean on that level, like you know, you would snowboard a lot. But mm. you've also made conscious choices to do art as a mm. major part of your life. So you're mm. you're choosing these things. Back to your choices, you're choosing. You, a lot, you know, I mean, I look at life like you have a hundred percent of time, and what do you spend that percentage of time doing? It's like right. mm, wow, fifty per, you know, thirty percent snowboarding, thirty yeah. percent art. Yeah, like how much of your day is spent choosing things that yeah. put you into that space? You said you don't. Don't even care about eating or drinking. Okay, you know. great question, yeah. Mike. Yeah. Uh, mm. Wow, I think it's so different. Like it varies so much that like one day I might be like, I'm gonna snowboard for twelve hours if I have the chance. I think like with you know this from like filming, but with with filming you're like all in in that. So most of the times, like on a filming trip. I will not do like very well in taking care of myself. Like we eat shit food and we're just like, <laughs> I don't know. We're just like staying up all night and we're, you know, like I'm, I just adjust to where I'm at. I yeah. think I'm such an owl as well. So I don't need a lot of sleep, I think. So I'm like, I just adjust to the circumstances. So these percentage yeah. just change yeah, all the time. And like, at some point, I might even be at zero and I don't even have snowboarding. You know, like mm -hmm. when you're just not in a good space or you're like doing other things in life or, or even just worrying. Mm -hmm. Like worries are like, you know, when people just drift off of their track and just start worrying about things mm -hmm. that that might come into play later on or they're real, like they're real problems already and they have to be taken care of. And then, then those moments of like, meditation are almost at zero you know but um but i think that's the beauty of it because sometimes they're at 150 so you know like i don't th i am not a routine person mm -hmm. i have a very hard time with routine so i think that's how i balance it mm -hmm. sometimes it's zero and sometimes it's yeah way like so it's a it's a hard question but it's a good question to ask yourself mm -hmm. so i'll take that with me and what, Ask that uh, sometimes. <laughs> how do you? What, do you have any tricks when you catch yourself worrying? I mean, like you said, sometimes you just gotta handle stuff you don't want to yeah. do. Yeah. But do you have any tricks that like help you notice or um, jump into? Yeah, I think I I notice when I like um, w when I'm worrying. Like I might not notice that I'm worrying, but I will probably not feel so excited about things. Mm -hmm. That's that's when I know mm -hmm. like so, things are off because I like that feeling of when you have an excitement to your your day or to your like whatever something that brings you this like yeah let's do this yeah and um, and I tend to have that very easily around people so most people that know me through snowboarding I'm like hundred percent energy because I get so much energy from hanging out with people but like when I'm at my home and Sometimes, like, I'll just be at zero and I'm not excited about shit. Like, I'm just at home, like, maybe going to work and, like, trying to go out skating. But I don't want to go skate because I'm like, oh, fuck, this is not. You know, I just, I'm drained, I think. Yeah. And um, and that's when I notice, like, some things are off and then I need to change something actively. Mm -hmm. And then I, like, might put up, a, I don't know, I like spontaneous things. So I might put up, like, a... Like um something happening in my hometown, I'll I don't know I'll do a do a little thing with just friends, or I'll go camping, or I'll go skating, and we'll like try to I don't know um, draw also and skate at the same time, or like you just trying to make something because you can like create those kind of moments when you're like after even if you're in the moment like faking it till you make it, like mm -hmm. after you've put in that like time to make create something that makes you feel good even if you don't feel it while you're doing it it will like generate like the next step in, or you know it know gets you, the yeah. ball rolling yeah. kind yeah, of yeah, thing yeah. so like just force yourself or not force but 
get yourself to do things that you know that you want to do even if you don't want to do them right now mm -hmm. because it brings you joy in the end and you know it for sure yeah yeah chris and i both like walking yeah like i walk every morning and if i don't walk <clears throat> i have a shitty day straight yeah. up yeah. just do mm -hmm. and he has a walk thing too but it's yeah. nice to hear about other people's things and like choosing yeah. noticing and then choosing just something different mm -hmm. seems to work yeah i think so yeah. we got a guest yeah. question all from right an absolute legend who of the sport mike i think you uh you might have chatted with him do you know what we're talking about i mean he's top one of my top 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 people in the world <laughs> okay wow i'm excited here we go hello bomb hole chris and east stone ingemar backman here and uh, <laughs> i've been listening to most of your episodes keep on a good job and i'm really happy you have ilva on the show she's a good friend of mine great snowboarder kind person Hey, Ulva, I have a question for you. First, uh, I will say you're a very special person. I think you have a very open, creative, playful, and positive mind. And the question is actually where is this unique fairy tale mind coming from? Is it from the DNA? Maybe your upbringing in Iceland? Maybe other planet? I don't know. <laughs> what do you think? <laughs> okay, note, note. <laughs> oh, Ingmar, what a great, great person. Yeah, we have so much fun snowboarding. He's still sending it. Like mm -hmm. when we go boarding, there was an event like at my hometown recently and there was like a big, big ass corner and he gapped the whole thing and he was just like sending it all day. What a great, great human and a person to snowboard with. Um, thank you for the kind words, Ingo. Really appreciate it. Um, yeah, I think we kind of touched a little bit based on that, but... Like where it comes from might just be like, like a, you know, the way I just like talk a lot and like I like to express myself. Mm. I think, and like I think everyone has like kind of creativity and fairy tale inside of them, and whether that's like a good fairy tale at that moment or if it's like a dramatic story going on, like we all have so much it going on inside, and some people do not like to express that at all, and I. I do enjoy expressing that, especially to, f to people I feel comfortable with. And I, and yeah, like, um, I, I think that's a huge, like, um, that's a uh, kind of like a big, big road to go down is like how to open up yourself and especially to like public. I think this is probably the, the biggest platform I've talked like that this much on, like kind of ever, I think. And and it is like uncomfortable and sometimes you want to just like keep things to yourself like for the longest time i had this thing where i i didn't want no one in snowboarding outside of like people i knew personally to know who i was like what kind of personality or whatever like i wanted my snowboarding to speak for itself and and i didn't want to like i don't know i didn't want people to i guess in, like publicly know who I was or something like that and I and I, I said this thing was I was like I'm never gonna mix politics and I'm never gonna mix money with snowboarding <laughs> and I guess I think I do both because yeah I, I really care about snowboarding and that's why it comes down to that but um but yeah I think maybe that that I'm open and that's why my to him at least my creativity mm. shows and Maybe not to other people, but yeah, yeah, I think so. Mm. But um, yeah. How do how deep do we want to go here? Because I I'm like <laughs> I'm not afraid to keep well, going. Me neither. Because I one thing she, you just mentioned was <laughs> and I, I am so like it, this is such a heavy it's fun. talk. It, we're having fun. We've not been like laughing this about is great. stories no, or dropping, anything. We'll, do, we'll get into that. Oh, we'll okay. Get into that. But what I really, I mean, I, this is just something maybe uh, we can just touch on quickly because yeah, yeah. Okay. I think you really nailed something there. It's like you tell yourself a story and the fairy tale can be nice or the fairy yeah. tale can be dark. And yeah. what you tell yourself makes mm. you, I th you know, and that's what you're touching on. I think it's a really awesome point. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think it's like, a little bit of everything. I don't know. Yeah. 
Okay, well, we can go. We'll go back into this stuff because I'm yeah. just, I'm fascinated with it. Uh, <laughs> but we can kind of switch gears to a bit of a lighter. Note, yeah, um, let's do that. Because and this I is, might still drift off. Into that's okay. That. That's let's me. Go. I love it. Uh, we got another Patreon question, okay. uh, and this one's from Brian Mills, mm-hmm. and he asks, "What's the worst and best thing about the U.S.?" <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um. Wow. <laughs> that is a hard question. Yeah. Um, so many, so many, so worse many, things, so many worse things coming to mind. Yeah, actually, yeah, but but still, also a lot of fun things. I mean, uh, best things: snacks, dots, pretzels, <laughs> and um, probably yeah, dots, pretzels, and Gatorade as spot snacks is a great, great combo. Um, then I just think that worst things. There's yeah. Don't be Feel shy. free. Don't hold back. Come okay. On, um, don't be shy. Come on. I don't know, actually, but I do think like stereotyping and idolizing is rooted in America. Mm. Idolizing. Yeah, like idolizing people, like making them in inhuman. Mm. You know, like having superstars. Because mm-hmm. everyone that I know from like Iceland and Scandinavia that has had like big success in their lives are like really grounded still. Mm. They're not idolized that way. They're just people, you know. But here it's like, I don't know. Sometimes it's like this huge thing of like idolizing people to making them almost like inhuman. And so they cannot even act like real people because then acting like real people, they'll disappoint whoever is looking up to them or whatever. And I think that's a, I don't know. That's a crazy one. Hero hero worship. Mm-hmm. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, that's a, I think. I think maybe that's you, a that's you know, a quite American thing. That's to why, me. like, a lot of the big actors will move to Europe just to get away from it. Yeah, yeah. They'll move I, to I guess France I don't know. Or yeah, they'll move to. I wonder, places but this where is like, like a, the French people don't care. You know, this might be like, a very ignorant thing of me to say too, but I'm just like thinking out loud. No, I love it. No, we got yeah. it. I would even say though, just I think that even. Uh, some of the Asian cultures, like I feel like Japan is even bigger on hero worship. Maybe potentially yeah. at least, but uh, but yeah, not to say that we we are definitely the epicenter as far as Hollywood <laughs> and putting people on a pedestal. Yeah, and, I think. And yeah. you know, we that that's a that's a great point. And it would suck to be that famous person too. Yeah, yeah, yeah that's I what I think. I have to live it up. I yeah. have to be this thing. I have to, everything I say yeah. has to be. And maybe know. maybe even that has like within snowboarding even been oh, a yeah. thing. You know, mm-hmm. like where where people are like idolized up to the point that they can almost not like just hang out with everyone. They have to kind of be a cool guy to keep their status or whatever. Yeah. And mm-hmm. you're like, what? Yeah, <laughs> Cause I think, uh, and obviously like the European scene is probably a bit smaller, but, but like, I feel like in Europe, everyone just hangs out with everyone. There's not really like, I don't know. There's not really like groups. Yeah, let's talk about the difference between uh, Euro versus American snowboarders coming up. Do you feel like uh, the Euro snowboarders don't get as much shine? Is it harder? Lay it on us. Uh, we want to know. So what I think is like, I think that the the Euros that go to America and make an uh, approve, no, what do you say? Show up in America, mm-hmm. they can make it. But if you stay in Europe only, I think, unfortunately, it's not going to go the whole way. And that's just, like, because that's a big part of the scene and so many of, like, the the guys at the top, like, the TMs and then whoever's above them and, and the owners and the investors and everything is mostly in the States. Mm-hmm. And I, I think that's, like, a, to me, like, a, someone from Europe that's insanely talented needs to go to the States to make a career. And I think that's what a lot of like guys in like early 2000s did, like yeah. the Euros, they all 100%. moved here because if they would have stayed and the ones that stayed, they were just as good at snowboarding, they didn't become big names. So I think that's that's the difference. Like mm-hmm. the the scene is like, or or the, I guess at least the money, the money is bigger here. Mm-hmm. In, and the scene is probably like, I, I guess fairly similar. Like you have a lot of borders and the US is so big, but if you compare it to like all the if you take all the Euro countries together, for example, then it's like kind of like it is quite big. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, so it's kind maybe of that, that yeah. Coming here is almost like becoming out of sight, out of mind versus you you show up yeah. making FaceTime. Yeah. Is important. I think so. But it's changing a bit with social media. Yeah. Yeah. 
for sure. I think so. Yeah. But I think like just looking back at the older pros, I think I'm sh- I'm pretty sure like the years that made it, most of them moved yeah. or spent like almost the whole winters here. Yeah. Now I got a question. Definitely. Yeah. So, you know, do you feel like uh, coming from Europe, if you watch, if you watch uh, Americans and you're like, man, I'm as good as that, but or I'm not getting any shine. Do you think there's a mm-hmm. mentality that gives gives uh, Euro riders a chip on their shoulder to like want to prove themselves more at yeah. times? Yeah, for sure. And I and I think that comes into play with all of us, like yeah, jealousy totally. kind of yeah, thing. Yeah. And and that's for sure. Like uh, I think so. And uh, and I think that also like so so if you're thinking like uh like whatever, I could do that or I could do that. It's all like everyone that's anywhere in snowboarding has worked so hard. So like the jealousy is unnecessary. Like we've all worked so hard in our own ways to get where we're at that like n- nobody gets it served, you know? Like we we all like have our story of like, and that's why this podcast is so sick that you can hear the people's like kind of story and mindset into that. And you don't necessarily like all of it. Like, I don't expect everyone to like where I'm coming from and and the same ways I don't like where everyone else comes from. But in the end, we all worked like so hard to get where we're at. So like the jealousy is kind of unnecessary in that matter because everyone's working their ass off to be where they're at. Um, But I think it's also just like, um, it can be like an advantage and a disadvantage to be like an underdog kind of thing. And I think the Euros are underdogs usually because we're not like in the scene as much in like in the in the bigger picture, like in, in the scene. And and it is frustrating sometimes when you know these people that like, oh, you could do it, you know, but like or whatever. But we all know that those people so it's like it's just um it's a very hard one and i think i me as a as a european i've for sure been bitter about this and i think every like euro border has been like fuck like why is it so hard to like get out of like the euro team and be on global for example like that's that's Mm -hmm. like uh and 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 for me i'm like i'm i might never get there are global, you not? You know? Are you not on global? I'm Euro. Yeah. Oh, they're fucking up. I'm sorry. Uh, but but that's <laughs> I'm like. I'm sorry. They're fucking up. <laughs> big time, big time fucking but up. it's like um, it's just like this thing where you kind of like some to certain extent, like with not moving to the states, you kind of like accept the fact that you're not gonna get like full on, you know, in a way. I think for many Europeans, that's the case. Mm. So I don't know. Yeah. You know. A couple things. First, uh, <coughs> on behalf Sorry. of America, I'm going to go ahead and, and say you're welcome for uh, <laughs> giving you the motivation uh, to be pissed off uh, <laughs> at us. <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah. uh, but I, 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 I mm. mean, dude, I, I'm probably going to catch some shit for that. But you, uh, <laughs> you should, you should definitely be. I'm not like trying to blow smoke up anybody's ass and. But uh, if you're not on the global team, I don't know what the fuck's going on. By next Thursday. But, but, <laughs> but that's that's somebody's somebody in upper management's fucking up over there. I'm sorry. <laughs> um, and uh, I want to I want to change gears real quick because I I think there's a cool thing that we need to highlight, and that I think it's great for any up and coming snowboarder mm-hmm. to hear. And so when I did my research, I talked to Jess Kimura, I talked to. Maria, I talked to Hannah, and they all universally said the same thing about you. And it's such an endearing trait. You know, they basically, you know, Jess was like, you know, filming with her is amazing. There's no drama, no excuses, no complaining. She helps everybody. And then, you know, talking to Hannah and Come Maria, on. they're like, she, she's, she's so unselfish. She helps everybody on the trips. She's always helping everybody get other shots. She's always contributing, like, essentially talking about how selfless you are. And I think that's such an endearing thing that we should highlight on the show because a lot of times the best snowers in the world are the most selfish because it, it favors you, you kind of have to be selfish if you want to be the best. I hate to say that. Like, if you want to be the best of the best, it's like, I'm putting myself first. I'm the one hitting the spot. I'm putting my relationship on the back burner because I got to focus on me so I can be the best. Like, there's kind of like snowboarding is a, is a, um, it it it, fav- it 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 kind of pays to be selfish and it and it's a sport that's really about us you know 
which is great as a form of vehicle for self-expression, but it's it's not necessarily great in terms of like building community and friendships in some ways. Mm-hmm. But anyway, we're derailing. So I just think that um, the unselfishness is such an endearing trait. And uh, where do you think you get that from? Wow, that's a really, really sick compliment to get. And I love all of these women very dearly. They are really incredible humans. Um, I, yeah, I think for me, like, for me personally, I don't like when I'm selfish because we all have those traits, right? And I don't feel good when I feel selfish. So like that wouldn't, in in my case, that would not help me grow. That would hold me back. So I I know that for a fact. And, and, And it's not out of selfishness. I help other people, you know, like, knowing that but but I do think it just comes from like you know the the different types of snowboarding we were drawn to I think like I've never been drawn to contest or someone being the best or like I have not even been that good at taking compliments because I don't like them I I think it makes me feel overwhelmed and I, I don't really thrive in that so like I I think that all comes to my parents and how I'm raised I would I would assume like um, I think my parents are incredible people like really really they're great teachers in life they're like uh, yeah my mom is like so energetic full of life and just like the like if she was a kid today she would have all the like it is you whatever like I think (laughs) because she's so like she's an explosion of energy and happiness and she's so fun to be around. Like every one of my friends that know her just love her. She's like a crazier version of me, I think. And I, and in in the best possible way, crazy as a compliment. Like I think she's incredible. And then my dad is this very, very calm um, almost shy, um, not shy to me, but like, like wouldn't show up to school if he had to stand in front of the class type of person. And um, and they just balance each other like perfectly. They're very different people and they thrive very well together. And, and I think just coming from such a balance of like characteristics that are both great but so different is incredible, I think. And I think that's where like I, I just have always, I guess, see... I don't know. Maybe I don't know. I'm drifting off a little bit. Maybe not really. But um, I think like just being surrounded by great people makes you great, and and if you contribute to that, then everyone else becomes great as well. You know, like you you do this kind of together, and and making a making a video is a great example of that. Like it in the end, like tricks are cool and. Spots are insanely cool and very fun to look at. But in the end, like, there's some kind of dynamic that that cannot be hidden. Like, you can have the physically best tricks or the physically best stuff, uh, you know, like, or on paper, you know. But if there is not, like, that energy to it that you want to, like, show whoever is watching the video, like, um when it doesn't shine through what what you're trying to tell in the end it's like a you're presenting something to someone and if your your marketing is all over the place and they don't even know what you're selling that's like it just I, i'm just trying to put this into words somehow but then then that's maybe not like the best outcome even if you did the best tricks right mm-hmm. so like when you all work together and you thrive off each other's success and of, of each other's energy, you get greater outcome. If that means that someone else gets the ender, it doesn't matter. Like you are making it together to thrive off each other and you'll all shine through that person if you like all helped in a way. I To me, I mm-hmm. think that's like, and I think, yeah, going back to how I started this, mess of an answer <laughs> i i think that like just being raised by people that are selfless mm-hmm. and give without like unconditionally mm-hmm. love unconditionally just like are present i think that's where it comes from because mm-hmm. i 
I want to be like them. Mm. Like I want to give unconditionally. I want to love unconditionally, and and I and I hope I do too, most. And um, yeah, and but then you're right. Like it is a selfish sport, and that's probably the hardest part of the whole like showing up to being a part of the industry for me. Uh, that that was the biggest biggest thing that I faced, and Jess helped me a lot with that. Just like kind of, I think. Jess be- believed um, believed my worth before I did within mm. like this and and like that kind of stuff. So I think that's really that was very selfless of her. Well, that's like so, giving unconditionally. It's so amazing you know? how many people bring Jess Kamara up about yeah. this thing of her believing yeah. in so many people. It's just mind blowing. Um, and I think that's a that's a really perfect example yeah. of the topic we're just on. Yeah. Someone that like by bringing other people into the spotlight just like becomes a better version of themselves i mm-hmm. think and mm-hmm. and and that i'm super thankful for and and i know without like jess i wouldn't have been in this or i mean you never know but still like yeah. i think it was a really really big thing on the way for me i have a question yeah. which does come up i hear it a lot mm-hmm. um because I, you know, I'll go out and help people out, and I've come across people that are very selfish at the spot or on a mm. trip. I mean, it's, you know, you hopefully can choose who you're with, but sometimes you don't always get that opportunity. Have you ever been on a trip you don't need to name anybody, and how do, how do you handle that kind of energy? Yeah, for sure. I've been on trips where, where like you're not, you're not even in your right mindset because you're so distracted by, by your own feelings. Mm. And and that then that comes back to the choice, like what we talked mm-hmm. about earlier. Like, okay, you find yourself in these circumstances or this situation where you don't thrive, and you know you're not gonna shine. Are you gonna choose to um, be ignorant to the situation and 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 keep going, or is it something that's very like personal and dear to you? You might have to speak up and maybe choose to make a little bit of a bad atmosphere at that point because it might be important to you all right mike uh question do you think you know what it's time for right now i have no idea <laughs> let me tell you okay. something it's a little segment we like to call name that video part Ooh. wow big moment <laughs> now mike name that video part is presented by woodward wow have you ever been there i have I've only been in the winter, and I, it was a great time. But I heard in summer it just really goes crazy, too. Yeah. Uh, you ever ridden a mountain bike? No, I never have. Well, you might want to You can learn. You can learn how to do a backflip up there. You wow. do one in the foam pit, and then you go take it to dirt. Yeah. Yeah, that's one thing I love about it. Is every, I was trying to learn triple backs on the board and just pumped it into the foam pit <laughs> twice and just took it to the big jump. Mm. <laughs> yeah, that was perfect. Yeah, I've been, I've been going for the uh, quad, quad front. Mm-hmm. Uh, lawn dart. Yeah, I and like just that. practicing it in the foam pit. So <laughs> it's been good. I love that. It's good. I've actually gone there and uh, backflipped a scooter into the foam pit. Mm-hmm. Just I usually just highly hit, recommend. Usually it. just hit the tube park. Oh, the tubing's tubing. tremendous. Mm-hmm. Tubing's Jump. tremendous. Mm-hmm. Uh, they got great jumps. They got you got. I don't know if you've seen that Denver or clip that came out of Woodward Park. I have City. front seven. Beautiful jalapeno toe popper. Mm-hmm. That guy went to the moon on that thing. He's, he's yeah. that kid's got some talent. That landing was rough, too. Yeah, it looked flat. Flat mm-hmm. landing. Mm-hmm. Real yeah. sick. Mm-hmm. Uh, so Woodward's a huge supporter of the show. Um, you'll see coming out in a few weeks, uh, they're doing Woodward up at uh, uh, Snowbird for Woodward Peace Park. Mm-hmm. So it yeah. should be pretty cool. And, uh, yeah, if you're thinking about going snowboarding in the greater Salt Lake area, it's about 15 minutes from Salt Lake, 20 minutes or so. And you're... Ripping hot laps, you might see some of the top pros there. You might see Sage Kotzenberg. Mm-hmm. Yep, lots of lots of kids. So bring your kids up after school. They're open pretty late, and I think they're going to stay open for quite a, quite a bit longer. All right. Well, let's get into name that video part now. Ilva, how are you feeling? Zero to ten confidence level. I'm feeling like three or four. Mm-hmm. I'm not too good with that stuff. Okay. I don't know. Yeah, three point five maybe. Yeah, let's go three point five. That's a that's a reasonable low score <laughs> for me. Okay, yeah. here, we, here we go. Okay. Oh, that's easy. <laughs> that's Halder. 
Wow, you got it right. Yeah. Howler awesome. and I want to say Never Not. That's correct. Yeah. yeah. Wow. But awesome. Howler is, yeah. <laughs> He's that, the hero. That was, so, yeah. You He's t- a national hero. <laughs> like, He's a global I, hero. Yeah, like this it, This is taught in school in Iceland. <laughs> so what you got here is a, it's a DB bag. We ran out, wow. of, we ran out of the Yeti bags. Uh, but you got a bunch a bomb hole prize pack. In wow. here you got all kinds of uh, bomb hole beanies and hats and mugs and all kinds Ooh, of stuff. Oh, that's crazy. Yeah, so uh, you actually earned that. You Mert. got it right. I was almost positive you weren't going to get it right. I was positive that I was. I, I'm, I said 3.5, but I thought you were going to be a bit meaner to me as well. well <laughs> yeah, I, thought, I figured kind of the the marquee uh, Icelandic juggernaut yeah. they call Haldor might be a possible one. No, that's get. sick. I, I, like, I like that. Mm-hmm. I have a great story of the first time I hang out with Haldor. I was, yeah, coaching at that camp, 15 or something. And it was the first time I did sake bomb. Do you know that thing? Mm -hmm. (laughs) And the first time I ate sushi, too. So um, we went, like, after the whole camp, all the people had been working and coaches went to, like, this um, restaurant in Akureyri where the guys are from. And um, they were like, oh, we'll do sake, sake bomb. And I was like... What is that? I was playing, acting like I knew what it was, you know, just trying to be cool. And then, <laughs> and then we did it, and I just like take a sip, and the sake was warm. I want to remember, like it was heated, and then it went into the beer, and I just chugged it, and I just like pretended that it was all good, and I was first time eating sushi as well, so I like held my mouth and ran into the bathroom, and I just puked everything out it was disgusting (laughs) and i was like acting so cool as well when i got back you know like that was easy i was so terrible but yeah that was one of my first memories with haldor actually that's that's (laughs) That's that's par for the course (laughs) standard Um, evening with haldor mm -hmm. for part two of name that video part before we get out of here i'm gonna hit uh this one's for the listeners so if uh you guys know the song comment (laughs) on the photo of ilva on Instagram, on the Bombholes Instagram, that's where we pick our winner. And uh, here we go. It's a fine line between yours and mine. Great song, great mm-hmm. video part. I know that one. Thank God it wasn't the one I was guessing. I don't know it. I'm sorry. Well, you it's got old. your prize. You got your prize pack. So we're yeah. all good. Thank you guys for playing. <laughs> Name that video part. Let's talk. Let's talk trick nerd stuff. Yeah, let's do tricks. Okay. Uh, let's you got do it. you got a mean back one eighty onto the, the handrails. I've noticed. <laughs> I've seen it firsthand at Rail Gardens actually. Yeah. And um, the so uninvited. Yeah. That flat down rail back one eighty on heavy heavy move. Is there Thanks. a story behind that? Um, I guess there's a story behind every spot, right? Um, yeah, I think I just um. I had been getting really creative, like trying to find like really creative spots and like new spots in Helsinki, which is really hard trying to find cool colors and stuff. And I think I got some some of that stuff already, but that's like not that much tricks. Usually with those kind of spots, you're just trying to make them work, you know, like one way or another. You just have to make it work because it looks good. And um, And I was like, I guess, feeling like I had to do some kind of trick. So we went to this spa and I think a bunch of people have hit it as a down bar, like a, just as a down bar. And someone hit it as a, like a down bar to like a creeper thing and stuff like that. But um, I was just thinking like, what what could I do like differently? So I decided to set up the lip like for that little flat part because I knew it was going to be like quite technical and I needed, or I didn't need, I wanted something technical for my part, I guess at that point. And um I chose a trick that I knew was going to be really hard, and I did battle it, like, probably 80 tries or something, like, for a long time. Um, And I always ended up, like, going out of the kink at the very same spot, you know, just, like, getting thrown out of the kink, like, every single try, and the dropper was kind of funny, because we had, we had it pretty close, Uh, that was a rookie mistake, I guess, but it was really close to the to the spa, but there was like um, the roof where the dropper was, was really low. So if anyone else were to be hitting that spot, they would have had to been like bending down because I was so short, I was able to stand up 
on there. And um, yeah, then I and on the other side of this school, um, another friend, Saska, um, who was filming for Melter at that time, was hitting like a downflow down. And then him and um, Tuka, like the filmer, come over and they're done. And he got the clip and I'm like, oh my God. And when I see them pull up, that's the one that I land. And it might have just been my mind going like, fuck, he got the clip already and I'm still here battling. Like, mm -hmm. So I just like uh, landed it on that try and Henna was on the cam there and she just like loses her shit. And <laughs> it was really fun. That's dope. Yeah, because it was a battle for sure. Mm -hmm. I, I was there like almost whole day probably. Yeah. I could probably be there my whole life and never get there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, that was... Um, that was so sick. Yeah, a technical one for mm -hmm. sure. Oh, I was curious about um, just thinking about <laughs> being ice, being from Iceland mm -hmm. and lived in Sweden. Yep. Now, do you think in Icelandic or what language do you think in? It's a good question. I think I swap a lot between those. I probably think mostly in Swedish. I've lived there for so long and like, yeah, I just like... Like, I, I live there, and my boyfriend's Swedish, so he's probably the person I talk mostly to. And and I think, yeah, most mostly in Swedish, but probably I swap. Like, if I stay in the States for a while, I'll probably start thinking in, in English, or if I stay in Iceland, I'll think in Icelandic. Yeah, I think it's just, uh, I'm not sure, actually. Mm -hmm. So this has been kind of a complete uh, train wreck as far as like a structural conversation because we're just letting it go where it <laughs> yeah. goes. But it's been a great conversation. <laughs> um, you know, but to go back to your story here a little bit, thinking about the first time I ever saw your footage was in The Uninvited. And, you know, you, I'm, I'm just curious, how did you get into The Uninvited crew? Yeah, so um, that winter um, where when they filmed the first uninvited i think the first was like separate parts it was ivica and a couple of other girls that had like separate parts and then there was a movie like the first movie and that year when they were filming that first movie i i had been like working a bunch and then going to to revy to spend my like winter like um two months i was gonna stay in revy and i have a great friend up in revy johan rosan like uh, um yeah big big shout out um who who we went to visit and like just get out into the powder and uh he he happens to be like a great friend of the wasted youth crew um and uh and yeah wasted youth crew like filmed or just filmed with them a bunch and um yeah so when that year and and i guess johan rosan my friend from revy knew that she was making a video and and he just hit her up on like on like um probably called her or something just like hey i have a friend and like she's been like killing it or something and like she's pretty sick like you should you should ask her for clips or whatever and and later on i've learned that jess um Jess had just like when he asked that he was like, "Are you dating this girl?" And he's like, <laughs> "No, no, it's a friend of mine." Like, and uh, and she's like, "Okay, then I'll look at it." You know, because she didn't want you know all those like just people coming in because they have some sort of I don't know connection. She wanted it to be like purely from the passion. And sometimes if someone recommends someone, I guess it might be like more the people recommending them, wanting them to succeed than the actual person who is. Mm -hmm snowboarding uh but yeah and um and he like uh, i guess gave her my contact and then just kimra just like sent me an email i think was the first thing and i was like holy <laughs> fuck i like kind of lost it a little bit <laughs> and i had been like i think ever since i started snowboarding i have filmed because we were skateboarding first me and my brother and he had like a little handy cam and we would like film each other and then I got a snowboard and he didn't, so he would be like the one like holding my hand, running, and then like I'd be ollieing four stairs and he'd be filming that or something, you know? Like we were just like skating on the snowboard at first, and so I I had filmed a bunch of clips like that winter just because I always filmed street because I loved it, and um, yeah, I sent just my clips and and she was like, 
I remember her exact reply because it was so big to me. I think she was like, holy shit, your clips are fire. I remember that. Mm. And I was like, oh, my God, that's so crazy. And, yeah, ended up she ended up using those clips in the first video. Like, um, I think I got, like, five or six clips in the first Uninvited. Um, yeah, and that winter I didn't know I was filming for that. I was just filming because mm -hmm. I liked snowboarding and filming. Yeah. So I think that's kind of, like, the story behind that's incredible. that. Yeah. Yeah. And then so that must have sparked something mm. because then you went uninvited two, uninvited three, back to back Ender's ballroom. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's let's, crazy. Let's talk about that. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, so Jess just I guess saw my potential and and all the girls in the first video were super cool. They like most of them like hit me up after the video or like they've seen the video and the video came out and we're like really hyped on my snowboarding and stuff, which was really cool because to me, they were like, I didn't know that, like, I thought they were all pro. Like, I thought everyone that filmed for the first Uninvited were pro snowboarders. I had, like, no idea that they were all just, like, up-and-comers as well. But, but like, Maria and a lot of the other girls uh, hit me up after that first video being like, hey, would you film or whatever? And that, that was really cool. And... um yeah, so after that, um, yeah, Jess asked me if I wanted to film for for the videos, and I wanted to because it was sick. Mm. And, uh, yeah, I didn't know that I had Ender in the, like, in the videos. Like, I, I had no idea. I was just helping with the, like, yeah, I was probably trying to get her to take all my clips out and she was arguing to keep them in the video and <laughs> then she made a part. <laughs> yeah, and it was really, really cool. And I think that was like, yeah, I still I still don't think that that was necessarily the correct ender to those movies, but I still think it was a really, really cool thing for me. When did yeah. you find out? Like, did were you at like a premiere? Or? yeah. Mm -hmm. That's amazing. The first one or the second video didn't have any premieres. It was in COVID, middle of COVID. Mm -hmm. So um, then I just saw it when we got the finished version. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, on the third one, we had a premiere in Stockholm, and me and Hannah were there <laughs> with all the friends at home in Stockholm. And yeah, Hannah got opener and I got ender, and it was just a crazy night. We were just like, crying and <laughs> being super fucking so hyped sick. and proud yeah yeah that was really cool because you go to the premiere and it comes on and you're like i have no idea where my part is yeah i don't know what yeah, song did they you, use. yeah did you start when it when it started coming through were you like <laughs> wait we're getting close where to the is end my, my part oh, yeah. you were like is, wait a did second they forget it did oh, they get cut i was so nervous just because i also like really liked a lot of the other girls parts mm. and i was like oh, no that no no <laughs> you know when you're like yeah I think, yeah, it was really, really cool. Mm -hmm. And then I, then again, like, it's up to whoever is making the video. And it doesn't necessarily, like, find everyone in the right way, like, who gets Ender and who gets Opener and whatnot. But, like, for me, that was huge. And I'm very thankful for mm -hmm. that. Yeah. That's yeah. really cool. I think, I think that that's something that's really special when editors do that. I know a lot of videos are switching to, like, montage-based. <laughs> But if it's a part based mm -hmm. video yeah. and you can kind of like shelter the rider from knowing that they have ender or opener mm -hmm. and not tell them, it's like it makes it so much more special. That's really cool. Yeah, it was really cool, actually. Yeah. But yeah, I've always been into filming streets even before Uninvited, you know, just with friends and like, or basically trying to drag friends out because I was mostly like the force in it and like, hey, we should really, really go film something. And sometimes I, I got a GoPro once and I, I would put it on the ground and like hit a street rail by myself, mm -hmm. which is ridiculous when I'm thinking about it now. But that's how much I liked it. Like I really enjoyed the process of it and like building your own spot and whatnot. And they were like awful spots at the beginning, of course, like one eighth of a rail or something <laughs> with a huge lip and me with a GoPro on the ground, like ridiculous. <laughs> but that was just kind of how it started. And, and I was so into skateboarding. I think that's like why I was so into street snowboarding at first. And also like we didn't have a park or anything in where I, where I started snowboarding. But yeah, I think like for one of the first initiatives that I made to like 
actually going to film was to go meet up Sara Sekinen, like a Finnish ripper um, in Helsinki. And that was like my first time, like, I'm doing this. I'm like going to another country I went to Finland to go film streets. Like, yeah, I wanted to do that real bad. That's so cool. Yeah. Also really good point to because you know the snowboard street snowboarding is like kind of low on the on the echelon tier of of snowboarding right like the kind of the elitist mm. top tier is like powder right you mm. ride powder and yeah. and i think that's a great point as far as environmentally you didn't even all you had was essentially backyard street spots so yeah um that's that's just like an, another important thing to highlight the, i think yeah i mean i'm, I'm a street sure. snowboard advocate in some ways um yeah no i think that's a that's a really like you just snowboard on whatever is in front of you when you start snowboarding if you love it and that was all there was like there was stairs to jump down or like a little ledge and like close to my house or behind my school or something and that's where i could snowboard and then getting like a little bit older i could like hitchhike or get a ride to the mountain and like that that was like a really cool I think and appreciated period and starting snowboarding like I was just like a teenager and I knew I loved to do it but there were only that many days and that many opportunities so whenever there was an opportunity I just like I'm gonna go like right now if I can Mm -hmm. and then just the community being so open you meet the right people that like want to help you out and like you know just like see that you love it you know we've all like taken someone I guess under our wings or whatever, when we just see that they're so passionate about this thing that you just like want to live through them because mm-hmm. they love it so much. And I think that's where I got lucky. Like someone just saw how much I loved that. And, and like, yeah, like older, like people from, from Reykjavik, they were like, hey, yeah, we were going to the mountain. Do you need a ride? And I was like, yeah, <laughs> hell yeah. Awesome. So yeah, I think that's how. Mm-hmm. I, have a, I have a question. So coming up, uh, I, I met you, you were riding a nitro. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, in the past few years, I don't know how long ago it was, but you switched over to riding for Burton. Yeah. Uh, how did that come about? Um. Yeah. So do you want me to touch in on the nitro time at all or just sure. like straight to I mean, however Burton? you however you want to take it. Okay. Um. Yeah, I think that um, n- nitro is kind of a fun story because I, I – I was just snowboarding a bunch at that time, and um, and then Nitro was gonna have an outerwear shoot in Iceland, so someone like um, yeah, like a friend of a friend or like a a surf photog in Iceland that's a friend of a great friend of mine, um, recommended me because they needed like apparently they needed models, but he misunderstood that and he thought they needed snowboarders, so so he like recommended me and I and I went out there to like an outerwear shoot and I was modeling and I don't think that anyone at Nitro at that time had any idea that I loved snowboarding like they just thought I was like I don't know but that's how I came in contact with Nitro and then it was just like that modeling job and then I got like yeah flow boards basically but then um after uninvited two um that's when yeah Burden hit me up, and that was because Burden was opening a store in Sweden. Um, so this uh, this uh, amazing lady, Lina, um, oh yeah, uh, she she's like the um, manager of like Burden Scandinavia, yeah, like the big dog in Scandinavia, and um, she was like uh, trying to get a team on in Bur- in Burden, Sweden, because of the store. And at that point, I just like, yeah, filmed the for the second uninvited, and that's how that all came about. And um, yeah, yeah, they definitely she and Jess helped me on the way, being like, like, um, so or kind of like helping me out, seeing that I wanted it because for the longest time I would like almost actively not act like I wanted it because I didn't think I wanted it. Because I thought it was just like something that was. Describe that was, wanted it. Um. So I thought, and I sometimes I still catch myself thinking that like you get to somewhere because you're a girl, or you get to somewhere because 
of anything else but you, you know. And for the longest time, like I touched on like tiny bit earlier, I would be like, um, I only want my snowboarding to speak for me. Like I don't want people to know who I am. I don't want them to know who I look or like anything. I didn't want to be like public. But then getting like just the pinky into the scene, then you know like, oh, people want you for you and your snowboarding is just a bonus. And that kind of just like opened up a whole new world for me, I guess. And then f for that, like, I guess for that reason, I started to want it because I think Jess made it fairly clear to me that like you, you are like wanted and like you don't like, because I, I like, I always feel like for me, I'm not the best snowboarder out there. Like I, I, I don't think that I'll ever be best at snowboarding, but I'll, I'm best at doing what I can do. And like, I bring me to the, to the mix and I hope that will inspire other people. And I know that inspires other people because sometimes other people tell me that. And that, that's kind of like Jess and other Lena and other, other people on the way have like kind of put that into my head that like, it doesn't matter. Like you are there because you, deserve to be there and like you inspire people and that's that's a very cool thing to hear when you don't believe it and and getting to the point where you kind of start believing it it's really cool mm. i think yeah how special is it to have somebody that believes in you before you believe in yourself <laughs> yeah it's really really cool i think and uh and i really like i hope i'm that to other people because it's it means a lot yeah yeah, yeah. jess yeah. could see it even when you couldn't and that's fucking so rad. Yeah. Uh, we got a get. We got a Patreon question from Nikki Lorenz. Mm -hmm. It's a solid question. There, there are female events starting to pop up all over. Why do you feel it's important to make these spaces for women? And do you feel like there's more work to be done? Okay, that is a heavy question, <laughs> and we could probably be on that topic for a really long time. <laughs> um, and I think just that's because I care about this topic. Let's um, go. Yeah. I think we'll go from the like kind of start because for the longest time, um, I didn't want to admit that there was no such thing as women snowboarding. That word was like very negatively loaded for me. I thought that was kind of like separating and putting people into like different boxes. I think, and and it was such a like. I don't know, it, it sounded like a, a negative thing to me and I'd be fully ignorant to it when people would say, oh, you're you're the sickest girl I've ever seen snowboarding. Or, you know, like comments like that would like get me to the point where I'd be just like, kind of almost like fuck you. Because I it was so like sensitive to me. I, up until kind of, I guess, this wave of like women owning up to the word and like, Women snowboarding now is such a powerful, like, word, I think. But at the same time, it it is, like, kind of, it separates things. And and I think we need, we need that part of, like, women snowboarding uh, movement, let's say, to get to um, where we want to get to. And, and then where we want to get to is probably different for everyone. But in my head, where we want to get to is just like all having the best time, inspiring each other and being as great as we can be as a whole, like kind of community. And and like to do that, we need like the activist. So the activist comes in and like puts in all the hard work and like the blood and the tears, like kind of like uh, those women that came into snowboarding a bit earlier than I did, started doing. They were full-on activists, like Desiree and Jess and these amazing women that just have paved an in incredible... Oh, hell yeah. Uh, have paved, like, an incredible, like... And, and many more women before them, even. Like, just a, just a little track for, for us others to kind of, like, let's say, join the movement if we see it as, like, a political thing, like... And, and now it's very easy to jump on board on it and you don't even feel like you're doing anything like um, political. But just existing as a woman in the community now, you're already like almost in, in that movement of like, we're doing this together just to 
hopefully get to this end point of where there isn't like just a women's event and a men's event, but like we meet in the middle and like, or not even in the middle, we just meet where it's comfortable. And, and, and that means not women have to work to adjust to whatever is going on. That means the women are also creating the event. They're creating the circumstances. And, you know, like for that to come about and when it's all like fully inclusive and we don't have to call it like a um, women's event or like uh, whatever, for that to like come about and be just like the way everyone I think naturally wants it to be, like feel comfortable and, and you know, be fun. Like in the end, we're all just trying to have fun. So... It just needs, I guess, it needs a, it, or it's, uh, yeah, I think it still needs some work to get there, but it's a great question. And I'm, I'm lucky that I'm not a politician and I'm, I don't want that route. Um, so I don't know the answers to how we, how we make it like great, but I just, I just know what I think would be great. And, and I'm happy that I don't have to, or have to and have to put in all the work but yeah something like that i don't know if that came out right or came out great yep yeah we're yeah we're we're doing it and it's fun as hell like i remember for the longest time when you were filming this would be a normal question so someone would be like do you like filming with boys or girls more what kind of question is that like I like to film with my friends. Like, and if that's boys or girls, I don't think that really matters. You know, like, but that was a pretty normal question a couple of years ago. But now nobody, no, nobody answer, asks that question. Nobody thinks about that because, like, it comes down to, like, personalities rather than, like, your gender. Like, it has really, honestly, nothing to do with it. <laughs> like, it's just, like, how you interact with other people and stuff. Now I'm curious when just to get a little more specific with mm-hmm. uh and excuse my ignorance for this question, but I, just, I think it's a good kind of could be a good wormhole to go down. Mm-hmm. When you look at like the end goal specifically, yeah. are you are you talking about <clears throat> uh you know, more women snowboarding period? Like in general, are we talking about like men and women uh coexisting in videos more frequently? Are we talking about teams being equal? Like, I'm just kind of like curious because it, it was a little bit vague, and I'd love to hear what your vision is a little bit more particular. Yeah, um, yeah. I guess I don't have the answers to it, and that's why it's vague. I don't, I don't know what is the end goal. Like, I think that, I think that more women uh, getting involved in snowboarding is like gonna benefit snowboarding so much, and that's why I think. That yeah, that could be some sort of end goal to have it like more more women in snowboarding. Period. Like every aspect of snowboarding, not just like just every aspect of like daring to take up space and and daring to own it, kind of, and 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 being like proud of themselves. Because I'm not there, and and I wish I was. So like we we need more women to like fully own up to like I'm here and I'm. I'm showing up and like I want this and because I know there are many that do but to them whoever is like thinking like that I think this fake it till you make it mentality is great like really because in a in a certain like like when you get to the point of like you know when you're I guess in circumstances that you find yourself quite like uncomfortable in, you're you're testing your boundaries of like, is this what I want? And you wouldn't know that unless you were there. And I'm saying this to myself just as much as anyone else, that like showing up is the number one thing. And that's why those like the events that are all women events um, are really, really cool because I feel like a lot of the women there to show up for that. But that shouldn't be, or to me, the end goal is not to separate the things. Mm. And that's why I would love to see that evolve into being that comfortable as you are on a women's event every day in your hill. Mm-hmm. That's what it, it should come to. Like that's, and, and that then should like 
go to events as well. And I think with the younger generation, this is already happening. Yeah. And women are not afraid of success anymore, which is fucking cool. Mm. We see that in the young girls. They're not afraid of getting good. Like, I just remember being so scared of like, fuck, what if like, what if I'm getting better? And like, because there is this certain mentality, which is like almost from movies and shit, like Hollywood movies, where there's always that one cool girl. And who, who was the bad guys in those movies? All the other girls. And who was the guys that accepted that one cool girl? The boys. Fuck that shit. Like, that's so whack. Mm. So, like, I think that's what why our younger girls are so sick right now. They're not afraid to, like, be that successful girl because they know that the other girls will back it. And it's so sick to see that come to life and be a part of it in, in one way or another. And I think... It's just so powerful. And that's why we're going full on activist, all women's, because right now we need it, but in hope of not needing it later. Mm. Kind of like women voting or anything, any matter that has ever been politically brought up is because someone was an activist mm. and said, fuck this, this is not cool. Like we're changing this. Mm. And, and that to these people, like, hat off like that's an insane position to be in where you believe in justice more than your own well-being like you're ready to go and go through shit feel like shit just because you know something is like something is more important than your own well-being that's kind of what it is to be an activist i think and and i'm i'm not ready to do that in any ways but i'm ready to jump on when someone already is going. And I think that's a choice. Like, th that's a choice that that should be very, like, um, I don't know. I think to a lot of people, that's that's where we can help. And, and when we jump on that, like, movement, we feel good because we have, like, found ourselves and we care and we are ready to put in, like, a certain amount of our energy into that, but not all of it, mm -hmm. like, in a way. I don't know. I might be talking too much no you just hit some you hit some flow state there <sighs> from good topics Fuck. it's really good you're gonna have to edit all of this <laughs> no, no, no. i like i think the <laughs> most the most power, oh my god the powerful thing i heard is uh not scared of success or however you worded it and i think yeah. remember the word you used but that was yeah yeah and yeah, i also you know what came up for me when i was in that is <clears throat> You know, I worked in pro snowboarding as a pro snowboarder, but also in the industry. And I'm starting to see more women in at the brands. Yeah. In art roles or sales roles. Mm -hmm. or it's not just the pro athletes. It's like the whole community, more women in. So, oh, yeah. And it just, it builds more attraction for women to join. Mm -hmm. Like the yeah. more involved that we make women yeah. in every part, it's going to bring more women to snowboarding too. Yeah. So. Yeah, I think like, so. Yeah, and it seems like I mean, there's it's it's like uh, an interesting topic because you know you think about I mean shit, man. Like women, I think I've brought this up on air before. I can't remember. If we do so many of these damn things, but like <laughs> women um, couldn't even vote in the United States that long ago, you know. Yeah. And it's like you're gonna tell me that like that all of a sudden like it just goes from like can't vote to like we're equal. Like yeah. no, it doesn't. Like there like there's like kind of like generational mm -hmm. bullshit that's like traveled down that's in in psyches of yeah. dudes that that we don't even know are in there and so it's like it's it's important mm -hmm. to to realize to like first a be aware of it yeah. oh shit there is some gender biases going on here this is kind of fucked mm -hmm. up and then and then uh you start to see changes but it's beautiful i think like i don't know i mean i'm not this is complex socioeconomic shit that i don't fully understand you know and i'm a <laughs> dude so forgive me in a lot of ways, but I feel like it's beautiful in the sense that like a lot of my friends' kids, you know, and my family's kids that, that have daughters that they're they're raising them not to be like it's like oh you want to snowboard like you're coming snowboarding you know yeah. where you, there's a little bit more gender norms there's like yeah. maybe the maybe the boy son's going snowboarding and and the girl's gonna do something that's not as dangerous yeah. or something you know yeah for sure I think it, I think just like I don't know, in general, with this topic, it's always like a little bit 
for me, it's still like a little bit touchy because I've, for the longest time, I wouldn't even acknowledge that there was women snowboarding. And if anyone said that, I would say there's no such thing. There is only snowboarding because I loved snowboarding so much that I didn't want to be identified as anything within that. It was my free space. Like I can be just me. And then putting that into a box and like, and, and same goes for like, when people say like street snowboarder or whatever, like to me, that's like, that just comes to identifying yourself. And like, I've, I've like actively tried to choose to not identify as too many things because when you do that, not only like, uh, do you find like safety in identifying as something, which is a positive thing, but you also limit yourself. And, and that's like, when you limit yourself, there's like, there's, there's these scary moments of like, when am I being true to myself? And when am I like being true to someone that thinks, or like someone that I think myself as, you know, like that's the, I think, and that comes down to like what we think about like style and tricks and fashion and whatever in snowboarding, like we always have such strong opinions and we don't like this and we do like that. And, and I'm very guilty of this too. And I'm like, I don't like this trick or whatever. But like by saying that you could always, you could also like kind of put yourself into a little bit of a corner because you don't allow yourself to grow then because like our style and taste and everything changes all the time. So like just by stopping and identifying and like pointing fingers it just like it might put you in like a bad spot and sometimes so yeah sometimes it's good because we want to be a part of something and we want to be these like people who who have have it all together you know know what we are and then sometimes it's really bad i think i know can i elaborate on an yeah. example that uh, yeah. it was coming up as you were talking mm -hmm. just because you got my wheel spinning yeah it's like think about like Sean White, for example, right? Mm -hmm. Sean White for me on this show is sometimes a punching bag, right? He's an yeah. easy easy target to make fun of. Mm -hmm. And why is that? Well, Sean White, I want I want a <laughs> snowboarder to be a fucking snowboarder, right? Like I want a snowboarder that like cares about the community, that shows up and is like at the hill, that's like in the mix, it's like about it, that's like proud to be like I'm a snowboarder, not a snowboarder that lives in Hollywood or whatever my story about who he is. Yeah. But like, okay, so I'm hating on him. Because he's just not meeting my expectation of who I think a snowboarder should be. Yeah. So I'm putting, I have this, I've created this expectation of who, what's yeah. acceptable as a snowboarder. And yeah. Sean White's not fitting in my box of what's an acceptable snowboarder. So I'm going to fucking put him down. And it really, like you said, it like actually limits our view on, yeah. on what you're saying by, by kind of creating parameters and expectations on who I think somebody should show up and be as when it's like kind of yeah. dope when it's more limitless. Like you yeah. want to live in Hollywood and drive a Lamborghini and fucking not give a shit about snowboarding and you fucking do whatever you want. That's awesome. Right. Yeah. You know, or whatever. And, and not only like other people, but yourself, you know, yeah. when you put yourself into this, like, like ideal cool snowboarder thing, like, and then you're being so true to that recipe of like what a cool snowboarder is that you like, forget what you actually think is cool so like i think it's a very it's a very good reminder for myself and like other people to just like don't take it so fucking seriously like sometimes you might like something different and it's fun and that's like that's kind of the funny part about snowboarding like the people that like really make it are the ones that like stick out but just a little bit like you cannot like <laughs> stick out enough to be like fully different then it's like oh fuck that guy mm -hmm. but you have to be like follow this kind of recipe and then you like just have that little spice of different mm -hmm. and 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 it's it's pretty funny it's it's a fun um, fun little twist to snowboarding and i and i definitely think it's it is positive as well because it makes us like it's ma it makes us connect in mm -hmm. a way that we do like the same recipe and we do think same things are cool. So it's like there's both ways to look at it, all of it, but it's just like a, it's a funny little twist to snowboarding when there's like someone that's really, really being authentic to themselves and like really sticking out and great at snowboarding, but they're almost getting like laughed at, right? And then you have that person that is just like somewhere between 
being that like following the classic recipe of what a snowboarder is and then just taking a little spice from that person that's fully like mm-hmm. blowing and like growing within their own creativity, which is really beautiful and, and authentic and awesome per se, but it it doesn't seem to sell and that's why we cannot we cannot put our money on this. You know, like th- there's these yeah, it's it's pretty fun. It's uh it's fun and funny. <laughs> I don't know. It's really true. I mean it's the same <laughs> formula know. in music too. Like it, yeah. every hit yeah. song is like mm-hmm. nine point ninety percent the yeah. same. Yeah. And then you have Fully. a ten percent tweak to make it Fully. work and make it commercial. Yeah. It's too far out so, there, nobody fucks with it. Yeah. You know, like you said. Yeah. I, I can't you were talking about like I think about like ten snowboarders that I've yeah. known that were incredible, but like yeah. There's Zany Chris and there's mm-hmm. Zany Todd. So you know, I, like, I, I kind of want to. I kind of want to f- play devil's advocate right now. Okay, go for it. Because I like it. All right, this is maybe <laughs> this may be contrary to popular belief, mm-hmm. and I, I haven't really thought this one through. Okay. So I'm just, but I'm just kind of <laughs> extreme of consciousness here. But like, part of what I think makes snowboarding cool also mm-hmm. is that like you don't just like. Like if you, I mean, in terms of getting, let's just say, like respect in a way, right? Mm-hmm. Like, I kind of like that you're. It's not. It's it's like, like I'll take skateboarding because I'm a little more detached from that. So mm-hmm. I'll just I'll use skateboarding as an example because it's easier. And I, the way I view skateboarding is like, people aren't just like, oh, you're in, dude. Like you're 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 like we're we're boy like we're boys. You're she's she's my dog right out of the gate, right? Like you kind of. <laughs> You kind of got to like acquire a skill set. Mm-hmm. People are kind of vibe checking you. They're <laughs> kind of like hesitant, and then like you're you're kind of you're kind of in. Like you have to you have to kind of earn your way in. Mm-hmm. And and I do feel and I maybe that's counterintuitive to this community thing. And maybe I'm maybe I'm contradicting the fuck out of myself. But I think that there's something that's a little bit beautiful about that because I think about mm-hmm. maybe like. Like and I don't know why this annoys me, but like for example, like Harley Davidsons, right? I see like Harley guys, like somebody, somebody, you just buy a Harley, mm-hmm. and you buy a leather jacket, and you're like, I'm a Harley guy, and like you don't yeah. even need to know. To, there's no real skill set involved. There's yeah. no real. <laughs> there, you're just you. Just I bet it. they like they don't agree. Whoever's in that community is like they, no, no fucking way. <laughs> I mean, I, I've, that's my observation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I feel like in that, and I'm probably wrong with that. Yeah. But I think that that um. In skating, I, I I do like that there's a bit of a, like, you got to yeah. earn your way, you got to earn your seat at the table, and maybe maybe yeah. I'm contradicting this whole conversation. No, I don't think no, you are. I no, I think actually. that's a really good point, and I, and I agree. So that that's, like, that's the crazy part. Like, there's all these sides to the same thing. And you mostly, like, if you just hear someone out and you just give them a second to say what they need to say, you'll probably agree with them. Like, if it's not fucked up. So, like, I, I do agree on that. That's, like, fully valid. And I think that to identify within something gives you such power in, like, being your own person. So, like, earning that respect. Just, like, being at the skate park, the first time you snake someone, you're like, I'm it. I got it now. You know, like, because you have to get to that, like, conclusion yourself. That, mm-hmm. like, snake or get snaked. That's how it works at a skate park kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, like... There, there's definitely like a really like because then when you do that you feel part of it and that gives that person or yourself in that case like the validation of like I am accepted and that's a beautiful thing so like mm. walking that ladder to get to the point of like being accepted in a community is really really cool mm-hmm. and that's like really precious so in a way that is a really good thing because mm-hmm. it makes people feel more uh, selected and and like I guess precious and like makes them feel like they belong. It's funny because <laughs> I go to the mountain and I see uh, like in the line there's at Brighton it's like a million pros. Yeah. But if you really look around it's like 10 pros and like 90 people that don't give a shit mm-hmm. at all. Or there's people like Russell who He's in L.A. right now living there and like some 50 year old black dude will come up and be like, I work at Amazon. I love snowboarding. Mm -hmm. And He doesn't give a fuck about the tricks, but he's stoked on Russell because he's wearing the gear. And what do you rock in Arcteryx, Supreme? Like that's all every there are all these little lanes. But it started with him being a pro snowboarder. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So it's like there's so many ways to do it. Yeah. But it really does come down to the core. Yeah. Snowboarding stuff. Yeah. Somebody like made an analogy to me. Uh, I think it was Brad Stewart, founder of yeah, Bonfire. Smart maybe. dude. He was talking about the, like, 
it was like a, a pyramid, yeah. right? Like, and mm-hmm. it was yeah. like, you know, the the kind of the core is at the top of the pyramid. It's like five percent, ten percent, five percent. But the, there's kind of like behind it oh, yeah. follows the layers mm-hmm. of the industry, and and inevitably at the bottom mm-hmm. is probably like the general public yeah. that is a snowboarder, but yeah. maybe or a guy, a, a person who snowboards, maybe not a snowboarder, yeah. is at the bottom yeah. of it. Right? But they probably work a normal job, and their highlight of their life is probably when they get to go snowboard. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So they sure. love it just as much, like yeah. they just haven't turned their whole life into yeah. it. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because we're psychos. Yeah. Yeah. Because there is there's yeah. this other part of it about being like trick snobs and like oh, this yeah. trick's cool and that trick's yeah. not cool. Yeah. And, and we're all guilty of it. Of like course. for sure. We can sit in and talk, talk like dead eyes, but I'm sitting and I'm like, oh, fuck that trick. Yeah. <laughs> you know, for yeah. sure. Yeah. For sure. Uh, Be- because we have an opinion. Like we think some things are cool and we think yeah. other things are less cool. And that's like changes all the time mm. too, mm-hmm. I think. So that's pretty funny. Yeah. It's super rare when someone is able to put it all together and then mm. forget it all and not give a fuck and mm-hmm. still kick, still pull it. Yeah. There's a few people that have pulled that off. I think. Yeah. That's vague. I need an example. Like, Dude, you got to stop chewing that. I'm, go- I'm going I'm to stop chewing <laughs> that. <laughs> he loves the candy. Those Hell are so yeah. good. Dude, you can't be, out, <laughs> you can't be n- munching that shit in the air- but, headphones. I don't know, like someone like uh, like Rav kind of plays that line a little bit. Yeah. Because he's like really fucking good and he'll do something gnarly, but then he can literally hit like a one foot transition. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And just be wild with the edits and the yeah. music yeah. and the f- he doesn't give a fuck. But it's really, it really is still using the 80% for- formula is all yeah. there. And then it's, yeah. the sauce is just turned up a little harder than most people. Yeah. And I, I, that's a great topic. Like, uh, Jibbing smaller stuff, making it look good. I think that is like that's my dream. I would love to be able to make very small spots look great. Like that that's so cool. But that shit's hard. Mm-hmm. Really? <laughs> like it's insane. insane. Like Scott Stevens or Brad yeah. or or Len Jorgensen. Mm-hmm. We have Alec. We mm-hmm. have all those Anti Ursula, like all those Euros too, mm-hmm. throwing them in the mix. Let's get it. <laughs> Don't forget, the, don't forget yeah. the damn scandals. We're right? keeping that yeah. chip on. The, you know. Yeah, but it's a it's a crazy skill mm-hmm. to be able to like, and and you know all of these people are incredible at snowboarding too. You know, it's pretty fucking wild. It, mm-hmm. It's so much easier to yeah. go like I'm gonna fifty fifty this giant closeout and drop mm. like two stories. <laughs> it's gonna take me three tries. It's gonna be scary as fuck, but it's not gonna require much skill. Yeah. Whereas, like, you see somebody like Rav or, or Scott or they're like Bertner or somebody that's like kind of mini shredding, and yeah. like I go, I'll be riding the same thing, and I'm like, I I am physically not good enough to do yeah. what they're doing. It's like a board control thing. I think it's just like a like a really, I think it's a really cool thing to have to be able to snowboard on whatever is in front of you, mm. and I think like. Okay, now I have the chance to hit something really fucking big and get some crazy adrenaline. Fuck yeah. And then you get something else in front of you and you're like, okay, how can I make this look good? And uh, for the most part, you probably fail. But then like that one clip is like, oh, that looked sick on that thing. You know, like, so yeah, I think that's a really, really cool take on snowboarding. Just like, not not li- like just, I'm not saying that like, I only would like to watch mini shred because that's not true because i like the gnarly stuff too i like to see someone go crazy you know but there's like there's so fun to see someone that can do it all and i think to me that's the most charming aspect of snowboarding is being like being able to getting into the flow of just like snowboarding and looking good while doing it Mm. wherever whenever i think that's the coolest thing Mm mm-hmm Cooler than being fully gnarly. Cooler than being very technical on, like, certain things. Just, like, Mm. the coolest thing is just, like, when you see someone feeling good, like, being able to make magic out of nothing is so sick. Or or if it's, like, making magic out of something Mm. crazy, it's still fucking sick. It's always fun when you're watching somebody Mm -hmm. ride and you're like, that person looks right on a snowboard. Yeah. It just looks right. That's a that's a really like I think that's everyone's goal like in snowboarding like or maybe not that's the cool thing we're all so different some people like maybe just want to test their boundaries of what am I physically capable of 
doing and that's really good for them. But like for most people, I would say that film video parts, that's the goal. Like have some of some like their own flavor to bring to the table. And that's like my dream to be to be able to look like like carry yourself as you and like you could be wearing whatever clothes and you'd still people would see that's you. I think that that's like the coolest thing. We we heard Jamie Lynn on this show describe uh, snowboarding as a vehicle for self expression. I always that, yeah. that really jumped out at me. Yeah. Do you does that speak to you at all? Yeah, very much. I think that's a beautiful sentence to take into your like vocabulary or whatever. <laughs> yeah, I think that's really cool, and I think that's it's fair to say that most people that film video parts feel the same way. Question. Yes. Have you ever hit a smelling salt before? I have at the Bird and Fall Bash. Yeah? How yeah. was your experience? Crazy. Fun. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, the Fall Bash was sick. That's really, a big, really fun. Big Burton party? Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So fun. Okay. Right. How do we you just squeeze, just squeeze it? and yep. go? <laughs> I think I saw liquid come out. <laughs> wow. Did I'll get in there. Ooh. The strong back. Oh my god. Ay, ay, ay. Why is that so strong? Oh strong. my god. <laughs> oh my god. Oh my god. Wow. Ah, that would hurt. I've been a little you're going back in? Yeah, this is gotta, a good batch. If you hold it like batch. three, four inches away, you can kind of ease into it. Ooh. Again, these are run-through wall smelling salts available at bombhole.com. We might be sold out right now. In some <sighs> satanic way, it's really nice. Yeah. Like you kind of want you you know how I mean. Like yeah. we're all doing it, like going yeah. back for it. Yeah. <sighs> yeah. I was, uh, I feel like when does like, this like, help? It's so bad. It's so bad. Yeah. I like, can't stop smelling. It's oh, like God. when someone says, so Smell bad. my boots. They yeah. smell so bad and you have to do it. Yeah, that's yeah. true. These wake, That's me, these by wake the way. you up. It's actually not a great analogy because they, they actually have a good effect, though. It's not like smelling somebody's boots. You actually get energy from these. Is it like, does it help if you're having like um cold? Do you think I it's think good? So. I think it helps with just about everything. I think it's cool. like uh it's like a kind of a fix all for all ailments. Okay. Yeah, your, like, your foot should feel better. Yeah, your than foot, yeah, your ankle should be healed. Though. Hell yeah. Should be healed in the next what two, three hours. Smelling after salt that. On yeah. There? yeah, it's uh it's it's, it's kind of more of ho shit. it's homeopathic. <laughs> it's actually homo it's a homeopathic. <laughs> okay, so cool. Actually, one thing I've seen Mike do wow. is is do a smelling salt and and physically run through uh, a wall, okay. a sheetrock wall. Really? It happened. Yeah. Yep. First cool. time I did it, I didn't know what to do. I freaked out, <laughs> lost my shit, ran at the nearest wall and just flew right. Yeah, through. we we have wow. footage of it. Julian, you, you can throw that on the screen, right? Okay. Cool. Okay. Cool. All right. Um, well, that'll be looping while he, while he talks about that. Wow. Um, all right. So let's get into it. Let's talk about, speaking of running through walls, maybe we get into this big-ass 50-50 well, um, that you grace the cover of Method with. Oh, yeah. Uh, which is unreal. Cool. The thing is size large. Yeah. Uh, I would call it a monster. X XL. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. That thing is, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's a super size me type mm -hmm. of situation. Oh, mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. That was a big spot for sure. Yeah. Um, I didn't find that one myself. The crew found it, like Yarsi and Tatu and um, and Rene and and I we were on a trip in uh, northern Finland last year. So um, yeah. Sorry, late to the air horn party on that. No, you're all good. It's a good crew. Love filming with those guys. We have a great time. Um, yeah. So we're making a video, and it was supposed to come out like this fall, so two years. But Rene ended up. Getting injured, unfortunately, in the beginning of this season. So uh, it was all just put on hold for one year. So we haven't filmed this year for it. And then next year will be the year for filming it. So we're going to have to wait a bit for the clip. But, um, yeah, that was a crazy, crazy spot. And we built for probably all in all like 12 hours to get that spot going. Uh, it was a warm day. And all of it, and it was right in the sun, so all of the snow around had melted. So we had to like carry the snow from probably like, I want to say like 100 meters away and every like just going up in the forest and trying to find some snow that was in the shadow of some rocks or something crazy to build that um, in run and the lip for that thing. And then 
Luckily, there was some snow down there. We had to move it probably like also like 100 meters or something to get it to the right spot. But yeah, there was a heavy build and it was like a really dirty snow. It was like just the, the dropper and the lip was crazy, like probably like 50% just like dirt. And yeah, just um, it's just like those, um, yeah, you got to go off the end of that thing. There was no nothing else so and it was really rough at first but we had a rub brick and uh also like drooped wax on there so what about yeah. the what about the snakes oh yeah <laughs> i told them off air that um that that day was like the first probably hotter day of like the spring so this there were so many snakes when we were building it they were all like crawling out to like sunbathe and it was just like a bunch of snakes we saw around that spot. It was like pretty crazy. We were just like, yeah, just like harvesting the little bits of snow we could find and, and then just like making sure to not step on snakes. It was pretty fun. Yeah. It was a crazy one for sure. Now, thinking about a trick <laughs> like that, that's a straight up no fall zone. Right? You yeah. can't you can't go down on that. Um yeah, I mean you can go down in the landing, which yeah. I did a couple of times. But you can't you can't I <laughs> heavy, guess you can't come off early. You can't come oh, yeah. off early. Yeah, true. But how did you how um, did you get yourself in the mental mindset to um yeah, good question. I think I was just like um yeah, I was just hyped to I don't even know. You know those things where you just kinda do them and you don't know how it works in your brain, but I kind of like, when I'm at a spot that I think is scary, I usually just want to go, like right away. I don't want to stand and like, so like I'll be going, okay, is cameras, everyone ready? Then I strap in so I can fully just drop mm -hmm. when I'm strapped in. I don't like to like hesitate on the top of scary things. So I think just that's what I did. Uh, I probably just like waited, not even looking at it, like not even looking at the spot until I like know we're on, we're doing it, and then I just want to like, yep, ready, drop, kind of thing. That's a good so, pro tip. Yeah, I think for me that's the way to do it because I will get in my head for sure probably if I if I don't do that. So, hmm. yeah, yeah, I think yeah. that's probably how I did it. Just I like heard that. heard you had a fun night too. Oh, sidebar, uh, <laughs> major shout out to Tattoo. He uh, yeah he. Shot the photo, and then yes. he's also hooking us up with some. We're gonna have some prints for you to sign, so we're gonna be selling Hell them on yeah. bombhole.com of this cool. tremendous 50 50. So, yeah, let's give him a huge, huge air horn for that. So, thank yeah. you so much. And I want to hear about the night you found out that you were on the cover of uh, Method. Yeah, that was a fun night in Innsbruck, but yeah, it was a wild night. We, um, we ended up getting a back to back cover on like two different issues, me and Maria. And this mm. was the only premiere we did, like, uh, together. Mm. Uh, all of us except um, Dave was not there, our filmer and editor. But, um, yeah, uh, me, Nora, and Maria, and Grace, we were all there. And it was the only, yeah, huge shout-out to those ladies. They're killing it. Um, yeah, it was just, like, so much fun. Uh, Innsbruck Street Jam was... It's just like celebration of snowboarding, pure like hype, and everyone is there to have a good time, and you could see it. And then we got the covers revealed, and first I didn't see that it was me on the cover because I knew that the I knew that that footage wasn't coming out for another year, so I was like not expecting that at all and I just look up to the screen and I see and I had a feeling that Maria was going to get a cover with that photo because uh, it was so sick like the way the sea rail and the buildings in the background also kind of form a sea and it's just like like a very beautiful photogenic photo of that spot and um, and I just look up behind me and then that's her cover and and I just freak out. It was so sick. And we we're just like celebrating. Maria got a cover. And then I'm back in my seat. And that's when we kind of all see that the other photo is like also a cover for of, of my shot, which was pretty crazy. But I guess I was just so not like I hadn't seen the photo since the spot. And I knew this footage wasn't coming out for a bit. So that's why I didn't even see it. So that was pretty fucking crazy. 
Yeah. And then that same year, you got uh, mm. the drop in from Hot Cocoa. Also, yeah. enough, so you got two covers this year. How was it when you figured out you got to land on the other snowboard mag? Was that what it was? Yeah. Yeah. That was pretty cool. We were all at the. Um, um, we were at the Fall Bass in Vermont at the Burton headquarters. It was a great time. I, I love hanging out with these people at Burton. Like, everyone's so sick. And, um, yeah, we we were doing this kind of, there's something kind of like a first-tier program, kind of like your Patreon members or something like that, where um, where people get, like, first dip on, like, the new gear that's coming out and, and some stuff. And we were filming some kind of a video for that. I wasn't like a huge part of that, but all the writers, we were filming like this thing for the first tier viewers. And, and we'd done like a skit many times. We were like, it was like a commercial type thing. So we were filming it probably three or four times. And then the last time, like, um, so late I was walking with like uh, some kind of like packages. And then she walks in and, and on the packaging is the, like the cover. And and instead of like playing the actual skits, he like walks up to me and the camera goes on to me. And I'm like, I'm not supposed to be talking in this <laughs> thing, you know? I was like, oh no. And uh, <laughs> and then she passes me the cover and that's how I found out. And it was really sick because, um, cause, yeah, she was there as well and she shot the photo. So it was really, really cool. We got to like get the rear wheel at the same time. I, I think that she knew we had a cover, but but we were both there and it was really, really cool that we got it. Amazing. Got a reveal like that. Yeah, that was really, really cool. Uh, pretty epic experiences, you know. Something that you can't, like, dream about even. Mm-hmm. Getting covers, it's crazy. Absolutely, especially in mm-hmm. the day, day and age of, you know, back in, you know, especially Mikey's heyday, the amount of mm-hmm. issues that there were of magazines. Now, you know, there's only a few issues of, yeah. of each mag a year. If, True. If, you know, Torment only does one. Mm-hmm. And so... To get a cover is a, a bigger yeah. deal now because yeah. there's less. Which yeah, there's probably like 80 you could get in, yeah. back in, in, per year back yeah. in the day. Now there's probably like 25 or something. Yeah. If that, yeah. If that, yeah. <clears throat> and it's it's very cool because I think both of these things is some, like both of these photos are photos that I'm really hyped on. Mm-hmm. Like, because um, there's always like going to be that question in your head, which is like, ah, oh, did I get this because mm. of, you know, it was sick or did I get this because someone, you know, like is pushing the women for, you know, like there's that, that still really pops into my head. And like, I wonder if I just got a cover because of that or this or that. But then I know for a fact that I'm really proud of both of those photos. I, I like them both. And I think the photographers did an, an incredible job. And I think even the spots without me look great, both of them. So I'm like really hyped. <laughs> okay, you should be. Yeah. You should be. Yeah. yeah. Well, I think that's, that's pretty a, cool. It's a good time to talk about hot cocoa because that's the latest, yeah. the latest and greatest project. Mm-hmm. You uh you guys absolutely destroyed in that. Thank you. And it seemed like there was a good good vibe, good chemistry, Hell uh, yeah. good crew. Yeah. I'd love to hear your take on filming for Hot Cocoa. And if anybody hasn't watched Hot Cocoa, go watch that. It's shit. a mind blowing video. Yeah, thank you. Game changer. No, I think we, me and Maria have been talking about for since the first Uninvited, where I had like five clips or something, where she filmed the, the Andrew part for that. And um, since then, we basically talked about wanting to film together, and we never have because we just like, yeah, it didn't align, you know. And uh, and I'd never met her before Hot Coco, mm-hmm. like in person. So um, yeah, when I got on Burton, like one of the first things that I did was hit Maria up and say, "We should go film now. This is perfect. Mm-hmm. Like now we can do it." And um, yeah, I was like, "Fuck yeah, let's do this thing." And and Maria was more than like she she took the lead on it, mm-hmm. which was like perfect for me because um, I was ready to dream it and suggest it but I I probably I wasn't ready to put in the work that she did and she killed it on like the work ethic like she just went full out like she does best like just yeah being awesome and uh, we try to involve the other girls as well and, and we got Grace with us on on a trip and yeah it was just a great experience trying to trying to create something and I think for me like writing with Nora and Maria like I I see a lot of like 
difference in my writing. Like I picked different spots and I did different things, just the way we like thrive off each other's energies and stuff like that. And I think that was um, that was definitely a good learning experience for me to like just yeah use other methods as well. And you know, like when you when you take something from everyone that you kind of film with and and use that. And I I think both of them have inspired me a lot to like just um, yeah. I guess in a way, like think bigger. I've always been more of like, a, I'm such a feelings person. It has to feel good. But now I'm I'm realizing <laughs> that sometimes you can push through that <laughs> yeah. and do like crazy shit, you know. Mm -hmm. And that's fun. I think both of them have really inspired me in that matter. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah, there's that's a that's a fun yeah. blend to talk about too. It's <laughs> like snowboarding is a blend of like tenacity sometimes of mm -hmm. like not taking no for an answer. Yeah. Because you gotta have a little bit of that <laughs> grit, but there's also yeah. like the feeling part of it that you mentioned is, is yeah. another factor that kind of almost contradicts yeah. that. But it's it's fun stuff to yeah. think about. I think like there's so many different snowboarders that you film with and get inspired from that you just can take kind of like little bits of everything to put into you, and that makes you more you, even if that feels weird at some point. So like um, I wanna also like shout out to some other friends that I've been filming with that have really inspired me like Naima for example and Henna and um, just like so Sara Sakinen as well like so many people that I've just been very blessed to been able to like hang out with a bunch and film with and get to like who I am through other people so I think that's really cool alright I think another thing we just didn't talk about we should is your drop in cover shot mm -hmm. um, of Snowboard Mag. Yeah. Uh, Maria told me there was a cool story behind that. <clears throat> yeah. We were in Ottawa for like three days while filming for Hot Cocoa. And um, there was a truckers rally in Ottawa. Uh, you probably all heard about it from the news. It was like crazy. There was all these trucks like just posted outside of those government buildings and like they were having like huge barbecues and like s they were pretty peaceful when we were there but I heard they got kind of like out of hand at some point but um yeah since that was going on I think that's the reason why we could get away with getting up on that building because it's a government building and um and the all the cops were so busy I guess and it was just a Monday and there was people in the building working and and uh, we got we got a ladder and got up on that thing. And <laughs> Maria was helping me get up. And she's, like, terrified of heights. So she was, like, shitting her pants because she went up. <laughs> we had to go up, like, a couple of stores to get up on that thing with the ladder. And, like, she was holding the ladder. But I think she was, like, more scared than I was because she was, like, didn't want to go up that one step. So, like, on the back side of the building, we only had to go up two two times but then you'd go on the backside where I dropped and then there's three stories actually but yeah so we had to only do that two times to get the ladders up but it was pretty funny she was freaking out and obviously I was scared too and and we'd built like this tiny little landing thing and um when I come up there it just like I can't see the ledge because there's like snow hanging off of the thing so I can't see what I'm dropping into and I'm like just cutting the snow off the end and kind of like I told you earlier like when I'm when I'm scared or when I when I'm terrified of something I just want to do it like and I was like I was like I had taken the snow off and I was so ready to just like strap in but I just wanted like because we were waiting on the cameras or something like that and I was just like are you guys ready are you ready come on like because I didn't want to strap in until I I knew I could just kind of drop so yeah then then I did drop and and uh, and I didn't land the first one. I got like fully exploded down there. And then when we're climbing up for the second one, someone comes out and is like screaming at us, like kicking us out and like we're gonna call the cops or whatever. And uh, or not screaming, but they were like, "Is someone on the roof?" And I know someone's on the roof or something like that. And Wow. I was just, oh shit, like, but we go again, and then we just went and got the fuck out of there, cause yeah, yeah, we got we got out before anything, so that was pretty sick. Mm. Two tries. Yeah, that That's was awesome. uh, yeah. I I didn't have an, um, another try. Mm. I I think that 
we would have been busted, probably. And on a government building, I'm sure you can get in oh, trouble. Oh, you get big <laughs> yeah. trouble. Big trouble. Yeah, so that was Never pretty... back in Canada again, probably. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think we should maybe get into Hot Takes. Now, okay. Hot Takes is pre- presented by Oakley. Mm. Uh, I run the Oakley Line Miner goggles that you can see behind me over here. And I always run the Oakley Mod 1 <laughs> helmet. Uh, new to the helmet game. Uh, it's got a nice little boa deal on the back. I don't know if it's actually, but it's got a little like knob that keeps the helmet tight. Um, and they just pair well together. I've had a couple different helmet goggle combos. That one works really good. And Oakley supports the show, so you guys should support them. Um, so to get things started uh, with hot takes, we always start with the GOAT, the greatest of all time. Um, but, I, you know, as it as it pertains to you, you know, your yeah. maybe your GOAT. Mm -hmm. Uh, in snowboarding, both male and female. Yeah. Uh, I think we've kind of, like, talked about both of them here a little bit. I think for women, it's going to be Jess for me, Um, being a huge fan before even getting to know her. And uh, just, yeah, an all-around snowboarder, like, sick in the back and sick in the streets. So I think that's, like, Jess for me. And then I think Halder Mm. as the male. Okay, next one we like to ask is, would you consider snowboarding an art or a sport? Yeah, I think um, both. For me, probably more art or, or more down that route, but both, yeah. Okay, <clears throat> who's the most underrated? Well, um, I want to give this one to my my great friend, Sebe Landmark, back in uh, Sweden. Yeah, he used to ride for lip tack and in the back in the days yeah okay steel or powder powder yeah wow definitive right. choice all right uh, best style ever christy Pryor. damn haven't got that one but i like it yeah best method your favorite method probably nicholas muller okay favorite video ever made that one is too hard to answer. But, yeah, I, I'm i just going to go with, like, if someone tells me to name a snowboard movie because I watched it so many times. So I think it's that, for him that. It's not, I don't think it's the greatest movie ever, but I do think, for me, that's, like, one of the sickest movies that got me hyped on snowboarding. Mm. Yeah, That's perfect. Cool. Um, yeah. Best or maybe just maybe favorites better than best favorite snowboard graphic ever. I think I got a snowboard from Nikita at one point that an artist called Tulipop made the graphics for, and all the different sizes of the boards had different graphics, which is really cool. And uh, one of the I don't know which size it was or what exactly, but it was like a darker graphic with. With like these um, forest-looking characters, really cool. It's a great, great artist, like adventurous, cool, cool artist. I think so. I'm going with that. Okay, and would you go pants over or under the high back? What's your stee on that? I think I go under. Um, Most people do. These yeah, days. I don't think I think about it that much, <laughs> but yeah, under. Used to be a thing back in the day. Yeah. Okay, uh, if you go heliboarding with three people. Wow. And you're just going, you're just going to have a good time. Yeah. Who are you taking? And mm. again, again, I mean, you can you can choose somebody in snowboarding. Yeah. You can choose celebrities. It's kind of a, there There are no rules uh, yeah. to this. Okay. Just whoever you want. From any era to. Any like era, dead or alive, whatever. Wow. We'd be, we'd be pretty cool to go snowboarding with the Beatles, I think. Just like all of them in their young days. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> but dope. yeah. <laughs> Too many friends yeah. to pick from. But I love that. Yeah. Let's go boarding with the Beatles. I like that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, last question. Worst trend. Let's just go. Worst trend is um, is uh, not owning your style. Hmm. I don't know. Elaborate is that a trend? on that. Uh, I don't know. Just like being uncertain if, if it's cool or not what you're rocking. Like, you can make anything cool if you just rock it kind of thing. But when you're, like, dipping a toe in, you know, mm-hmm. and, like, not knowing if it's cool or not, but you're still trying to rock it, I don't like that. 
Mm. <laughs> cool. I don't know. Is that a trend? That's probably not no, a trend. It's, I think that's a yeah. trend. Yeah, yeah, I totally think. I see, yeah. I see that. Yeah, yeah. Like, you know, like jumping on something that you... Yeah, people buy style or they have style. Yeah, yeah. Because so, yeah. like in, in fashion and stuff, you like anything can be really sick. Yeah. But if you carry it the right way kind right. of thing. True. For sure. Yeah. It's a good point. I Back. think about... Yeah. My, yeah, totally. I always think about it in terms of gear. Yeah. Like Gigi Rough could always like make the craziest Volcom shit look good. Yeah. But like you put it on somebody else, you're like, I don't know about those. Pants. Yeah. And you see Gigi wearing them, you're like, damn, those are sick. Yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, I think it's like, it's pretty cool. Like those people that can just like put on anything and rock it. Mm -hmm. It's because they're so confident mm -hmm. that they're just going to be like, wow, For sure. look at that, you know? Mm -hmm. And I think that's a really, really, yeah, it's fascinating. <laughs> All right, Mike, you know what it's time for? No, I don't. It's time for the pub beer crapshoot. I love that. Do you know anything about pub beer, Mike? I do. It's an easy drinking, delicious beer, and it's super easy to spot. It's just white can, black logo, really you, easy. Are you familiar with their motto? No, I'm not. What is it? It's like a cheap, fun beer, Mike. Wow. I like that. Yeah. And uh, I'm like not cheap, and I like fun. Absolutely. Um, well, if you're thinking about responsibly getting um, completely <laughs> obliterated <laughs> or, you know, having one beer <laughs> responsibly, I should say, for legal purposes, um, what are you going to choose, Mike? I'm going to shotgun a pub beer right now. God, I love that. Yeah. Okay. So um, what you're going to need to do here... Oh, I gotta, we got the theme song. i got to play a theme song. Welcome to the pub Hello. beer crap shoot. Roll some dice. We'll tell you what you got to do. Um, it's a five and a three. So eight. Eight. Tell us about a breakout moment that helped launch your career. A breakout moment that helped launch my career. Um, we, yeah, going to the States for the first time snowboarding, I think. I had been talking with Naima on Instagram because Jess said, you guys are going to get along great. <laughs> cool. And she was so right. Um, so I hit up Nai and me, Savannah, and I did a week in uh, Minnesota. And then after that, I went to Salt Lake for the first time. And um, while in Salt Lake, um, I met a bunch of people that that I think was was a really, really good route into like making a name, making a face in snowboarding. And one of those things was showing up to the to the rail gardens where, when L1 was filming their out of her video and and uh, Leia, your ex girlfriend, she <laughs> she really stood up for me there. Um, she was like, because um, I I just happened to be in Salt Lake and L1 was filming like a, a video there, and at the time I was getting like flow snowboards and uh, gear from a store con called Stand Tall in Sweden, and. Um, and I showed up to the rail gardens, and then <laughs> she's just there screaming, like when when we're jibbing and taking photos. She's just like, "Why is this girl not on the team? What the fuck, guys?" And like in front of like everyone, it was so funny. But yeah, yeah, that was um, that was that time when I was in Salt Lake, and then there was that torment rail jam as well in the rail gardens and stuff like that. It was just a yeah, good time to show up. Awesome. Yeah. Good stuff. I was watching you mm -hmm. that's during that session as well at the whole time you were in the rail gardens and mm -hmm. you know there's some people that are that are video part boarders that are you're just like you watch their part and you're like holy shit but they turn the volume down when they're just riding and mm -hmm. they're maybe not filming. You were fucking shredding. <laughs> it was all, I remember being like holy yeah. shit. Thank you. She's insane. So that was that was cool to see. Like you're an in, par in person boarder, which is not oh, always yeah. the case. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. That's cool. Cool to hear. Thanks. Um, and it sounds like, you know, if I'm going to highlight what I heard there, sometimes mm -hmm. the trick is just showing up. Yeah, for sure. I think that was for me. Showing up and like, and kind of like daring to have success as well. I mm. think like, like owning up to it. I, w I was being the worst trend at that time, you know, not owning up to, mm -hmm. to what you're doing. Mm. But yeah. All right, so I've heard from a few people now that you've worked quite a few jobs, and one that stood out to me was a flight attendant in ice. <laughs> and then yeah. once you had done that, you also attempted to do the same somewhere else. Yeah, so I've worked as a flight attendant, and that's kind of hilarious because I'm tiny. 
And um, I remember first time meeting Iveka, for example, she laughed so hard because she was imagining me like really tall just because she knew that. And then I was like this tiny little person. Um, but yeah, I guess uh, that was a really, really funny job to have for on the side. And it's really fun. Like I loved it. It's like um, high tempo, problem solving. It's like fast and fun. And you get to like, I went to the States a bunch, for example, and I, I would always bring my like skateboard in my, um, in my like rolling bag nice. sticking out of there. And people would be like, what is that? <laughs> and uh, yeah, that was a really fun job. And I think I would still do it if I could do it in Sweden. But um, yeah, there's height limits to working as a flight attendant for the most companies. And they claim that this is like a security re or like, um, it's like a safety thing that that you couldn't reach the like safety equipment that's above the heads. But like, if you're a problem solver, it's just like funny because you might be like way quicker at thinking than anyone else. Whatever, just like jump on the seat and grab the shit. Like, there, it's so easy. But in their head, I think it's more like to standardize the looks of like how a flight attendant supposed to look like. You know, like she should be skinny and tall and pretty or something i don't know but yeah i yeah i worked with that and i worked with a bunch of other stuff just like i would work like half years just like full on two or three jobs and then just go snowboarding like rest of the year and um yeah then now i'm working a bit less so like i can snowboard more which is great but yeah cool yeah I mean, that's respect. Yeah, <laughs> that's a lot of respect. I mean, I imagined if I was a flight attendant, I'd definitely have to be climbing on the seat, putting stuff yeah. up. I'm yeah. sure you were the same. Yeah, yeah. And How tall are you? I am i don't know in American measurement, but I'm 152. So, I mean, you all know snowboards. So, 152, pretty oh, yeah. small board. Yeah. That's me. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that's a good yeah. jib board. I guess, a good yeah. Dude's jib board. Yeah, I'm 152. Um mm -hmm. <laughs> that's hilarious that it totally like makes sense when you do that yeah. conversion um all the flight attendants i know mm -hmm. or that i've met i don't really know any too well actually i do actually spencer's mom's one yeah debbie give her spencer name. Schubert. Mm. Uh, oh yeah cool they party yeah Isn't oh my god it's, it's like fun. a big party yeah <laughs> yeah it's fun I'm definitely a party person. I, I love that shit. So I'd be having a great time. What would usually be like the full crew just going out to dinner and then party. Because you get like layovers for, mm -hmm. for a certain amount of time because it's like pretty strict with like um, you're kind of, it's called you're illegal when you're like you have to rest a certain amount of days after like a flight. So you're on your like, I guess, A game or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like you have to be sharp. So that's pretty cool. Because it's pretty, like, funny. Like, the, a lot of shit happens on these flights that you would never think about if you're, like, just a passenger. Like, people faint, like, all the time or, like, fall in the bathroom or whatever. Like, there's, like, so many, like, you're almost like a, like a kind of a nurse, too, and just, like, problem solving. And then someone might, buy, like, go full crazy or, you know, like... There's all these things that's really easy to like hide from the rest of the plane if you're quick or it's like a total shit show if you yeah. don't react. And I think that's why it's like a, a little bit of like I, I have so much more respect for like flight attendances after I worked with it. Because I thought in my head, like before I worked with it, it was like just like serving food and like, <laughs> I don't know, <laughs> putting up the bags when people come. But it's quite stressful sometimes. But it's great. I like it. I love it. Well, one thing we always ask our guests that come through is we always ask them about <laughs> their snowboards and their setups. So yep. what uh, what board are you riding? How do you set it up? What's the deal? Yeah. Um, I'm quite a chameleon with the boards. Like, I like different boards. Um, right now, what I've had set up for riding is the Good Company, 145. Um, set up on the bindings right now would be like, 18.5 or something um and um uh, stance just varies all the time and my angles so i i wouldn't say i'm full geek there i just i just do whatever feels comfortable and then i might change that and yeah 
and then my street board would be a bit shorter. And right now I write the rewind for streets. Name dropper is called as well for the men's. Do you yeah. uh, detune? I do not. You read razor sharps. Yep. Respect. Yeah. Um, Forward lean. A little bit. It's better on my knees. I have pretty bad knees, so yeah, a little forward lean just for the body. And what other sponsors you rocking got? Burton Outerwear, uh, Crab Grab, yeah. and um, Operative Eyewear. That's killer. Mm-hmm. We, we got a good uh, Patreon question from one of our Patreon members about the Burton products. He says, "Yeah, I have questions about the Burton snowboards. Okay, does her binding hardware come loose quickly with the channels? No, not for me." For me, it's been really good. Like, I think for me, since I got on Burton, I've, because I'm a smaller person, like, it's sometimes with other companies, it's been hard to find good gear, you know, but but it's easy. They have the sizes in every size, which is mm. great for me. And I haven't had any problems with it. They, make, say. they make good boards. Really good boards yeah. and really good boots. Mm. I like the boots so much. By needs the channel system, I think it's just like a thing to get used to because some people are not used to it first, but it works really well. Yeah. I haven't had any issues. So, cool. Well, I got to ask, uh, mm-hmm. what's, what's next? I'm going to do more snowboarding. Uh, and I want to backcountry snowboard more. And I've, I've always like seen myself as like an all-around snowboarder, not like the one or the other but um so i i want to like i want to keep snowboarding to keep that accurate because if you go full streets then you kind of aren't very all around anymore because you don't spend as much time on your snowboard um so yeah i want to get out a bit more in the backcountry i still want to keep filming streets because i love it and it gives me a lot of like creative outlet and and good good things and I hope and I hope I'll just be doing this for a long time I really enjoy it and I think uh I think it's working with like inspiring people and I think whatever people want to watch that's good so as long as that's relevant and people want to watch it I'll keep doing it you know and yeah do it for for me and um yeah hopefully while I'm doing it for me I'm doing it for someone else as well to get them and hyped and inspired to go board and buy some gear and and have a good time. Yeah. That's that's beautiful. Mm-hmm. Um, and then lastly, if you want to throw any thank yous out, you can before we wrap this thing up. Yeah. Well, um, I'm so scared that I'll just forget everyone. But so I'm just gonna throw out a really broad thank you to like <laughs> everyone. Um, I think it's thank you to you guys as well. It's pretty cool being here. I got to listen to the bongo all the time while I'm driving and shit. It's really fun. And, um, yeah, thank you all for listening and everyone that's helped me along the way. A lot of good people out there. They know who they are. (laughs) Yeah. Well said. Yeah. Well, appreciate you coming on the show. Uh, Appreciate you, Mike. Mm. Thank you. Appreciate you, Silk, running the production back there. And, of course, all of our uh, listeners, Patreon members, sponsors. Um, we really appreciate you guys. And again, thanks for coming on. That was such a fun chat. So, uh, thank you over and out from the bomb hole. See you guys next week. Got it. There it is.